Hello there, and welcome to the Being Human podcast, where we explore what it means to truly be human, physically, mentally, and spiritually. We upload an episode of this podcast every single week, so whether you're new here or a repeat offender, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you do not miss any of these episodes. On this episode of the podcast, I sat down with Perry Clayton. Perry is one of my best friends. He was the very first guest ever on the Being Human podcast on episode one. And when he was last on this podcast, we were breaking down his amateur MMA debut off the back of his fight on BMF in October. Since then, Perry has been up to quite a lot. Perry travelled to Far East Asia to train in Bali and Thailand. Whilst he was in Thailand, he had three professional Muay Thai bouts and won them all. Perry filled us in on that whole experience, what being in that part of the world was like, what it was like fighting in those bouts, what the training was like out there. It really was brilliant to watch Perry from social media, being out there, doing what he loves to do and succeeding in doing it. We went into all of that and that naturally led to him talking about the differences in Far East Asia to here in the UK. And the underlying theme of this episode quickly became the state of the UK. Look, I love the UK, but I do not think the UK is currently in its glory days. I think the country is in a bit of a crisis. Me and Perry went into that. Perry gave his thoughts on that, what exactly is wrong with the country, what we need to do to fix it. We talked a whole lot about society, culture, modern living, a lot of philosophy, of course, as always. All the usual things that Perry and I talk about, whether it's here on the podcast or on a long drive to Snowdonia for the day. It's always great talking to Perry. He's one of the most intelligent people I know. He always, he never fails to blow my mind one way or another with something he says, whether it's a clever aphorism or a mathematical principle. So I hope you gain some wisdom in listening to his thoughts. Give us your thoughts as well. Drop a comment below. Do you agree with Perry? Do you agree with myself, the views that we expressed here? The Being Human podcast is all about open discussion. We need to have open discussion and free speech in order to share ideas and ultimately make things better. So yeah, let us know your thoughts. Whilst you're dropping a comment below, also give this video a thumbs up, share it around on social media as well, and of course, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and thank you for supporting Being Human. The Being Human podcast is brought to you by Mr. Bassett's Grappler's Coffee. This is the strongest coffee I have ever drank. With that said, it has such a smooth taste. Mr. Bassett himself was actually talking to me about how bitter coffees oftentimes don't have the greatest degree of potency when it comes to caffeine and their performance enhancing benefits. So the smoother the coffee, the more potent and the more enhancing it is to you mentally and physically. This is really smooth tastes amazing and as a result it puts you in top gear for your day ahead and all you need to do to pick up a bag of this is to go to mrbassets.com and use the code wag10 to get 10 percent off your order and now presenting being human with perry clayton okay so before we actually officially start yeah i wanted to give you a little gift i know <laughs> i know how much you like coffee yeah just so, just so the camera can get that for a second, that is Mr. Bassett's Grappler's Coffee. It's a shameless plug, is it? The, uh, the official sponsor yeah. of the Being Human podcast. But no, I wanted to give you a bag because you love coffee. I do. Um, yeah, we could have actually had one today, but I was late, so you had to go to Cafe Nero. <laughs> I love this coffee. <laughs> that is the strongest coffee I've ever had. I do love an oil check as well. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. That's good. I mean, Amazing. I think it's two cups is the protocol if you want to oil check everyone into oblivion. I'll, I'll do three. <laughs> <laughs> you, Mr. I'd, I'd, Bassett, expect, I'd expect nothing less. Mr. Bassett's going to be so happy with you, bro. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome, man. Really no, but, uh, let me know. Let me know what it's like. Yeah, that is the strongest coffee I've ever tried. You, what do you mean? Oh, you mean what I think of it? Yeah, yeah, what you think okay, of it. Because I was like, you, you Oh, yeah, I know it. what I think of it. I know. I know. Yeah, because that's what you say when you've not tried something and I'm going to do something you've not done. So okay. I'll be like, it's like this. Okay, okay, you're correct in my English. Well, I have to, mate. Although Mr. Bassett's going to come along with it. He's going to drink three cups and punch choke you to oblivion, bro. <laughs> so I respect that. Thanks, Mr. Bassett. 
So the last time you were on this podcast, yeah. you just bought on BMF. What have you been up to? Since it was about to fight, wasn't it? Well, that's when we did the first episode, mm. but then we did the Oh, yeah, and then I came back. Oh, it's yeah, just third, back, third time. came back with Jimmy yeah, and Joe yeah, afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So this is your third appearance. I don't Jeez. think anyone else has had three appearances on the podcast yet. Patrick Hero, bro. Yeah. What have you been up to since then? Uh, same, same, mate, but different. <laughs> just training. Just training. Just bit, did a bit of traveling. Did a bit of fighting. Uh, did a lot of eating. Mm, and yeah. Cruising. Enjoying life, mate, to the, the best of my ability. All the flavors the world has to offer. I want to taste them all. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, so, so that's a nice overview, short answer. Yeah. You said a bit of traveling. Yeah. You went to Thailand. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Why did you decide that you wanted to leave the UK for a bit and go to Thailand? Mm. And then, yeah, talk to me about what that experience was like. Mm. Mm. So I, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the UK in England. I think it's trash, bro. I think the roads suck. I think the food sucks. I think the weather sucks. And I was like, this is all just kind of a bit shit. So I'm going to go <laughs> book a one-way flight to Bali because Adam was going out there. And I was like, I'll, I'll come with you, bro. So I booked a one-way flight to Bali. Uh, and I was like, Jesus, take the wheel. What happens, happens. I might be back in a week because I spent all my money and I fucked it. I might be gone for seven years. You don't know. Whoa. So I went to Bali, uh, trained at Soma, Soma Fight Club, which is like a pretty big, uh, pretty big, like, I want to, yeah, fighters gym in Bali. Um, like, just by pure chance, the, the place that I was staying at with Adam was like an eight minute walk from. So I was like, sick, this is God's plan. And, uh, <laughs> uh, so I spent a month there training, uh, met some cool people, hard rounds, like really good gym. Is that the one that Al Jermaine Sterling had been to? No, that's uh, the, 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 the Bali MMA. So the Bali MMA and Soma Fight Club are like 10 minutes from each other and then I was like five minutes from each of them so I was like oh, toss a coin Soma cool did you cold. visit Bali MMA or no 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 I just paid for the month for, for Soma and then just like that's enough and they had everything I needed bro like good rounds good bodies good coaching cold plunge sauna sound mate sound like cold plunge and sauna in an MMA gym yeah that that's was cool you don't really get that in England you don't get anything in England bro <laughs> you get fucking <laughs> shit baked beans and shit bacon mate that's what you get in England you get good coaching in England. Like if you're in the Midlands, like there's some really, really good high level MMA gyms, but like, yeah, it's just the, like the facilities were, were just on point there. Like two, two massive rooms and then an SNC room. It was just big and good. And yeah, sort of cold punch corner. Um, what was the cost of the membership for the month? I can't remember. It was expensive. It was like uh, uh, any single payment, probably the, the most I spent was like just for that. that okay. Month, so. So it wasn't cheap? Mm, no. No, everything else was. <laughs> Not as cheap as people make out. People are like, man, you can, you can go out there and you can, you can live off like a pound a day. It's like, no, you, no, you fucking care. No, you, no, you can't. <laughs> but it is like, it is, it is like, it is cheap. Cheaper than England, a lot cheaper. If you, if you go to the right places, you can go to like an Italian place and that'll be just as expensive, maybe more expensive. If you don't know where to look and you, you, you're happy to eat local, like, yeah, man. Is that the same with Bali and Thailand? Are they quite similar price-wise? Yeah. Yeah, I went to Laos as well. Laos was next level cheap, bro. That was crazy. Well, that's desperately poor. That's as destitute as you can get, right? Uh, yeah, so we took the, I don't know, the, some boat up, up a river. We stopped at some place. I should have actually looked on a map where I went. But we, said, we, 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 we went to the Thai border. Me and this French girl I met, because we were like, our visas ran out on the same day. So we're like, oh, let's just go. So we went halfway up. Um, oh, it's a major river. It's like super massive. But whatever. We went halfway up and we stopped in some town. And like, that was like. That, so that, that was River Kwai, you know? That's like a famous river. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll put it later. But <laughs> you can put it in the footnotes, <laughs> put it on the screen, you know, in post. Get your editor to, to fix this. But we stopped at some town and that was like, that was 
poor, poor, you know? That was like, these concrete shacks don't have windows, poor, like, poor. Um, but I, I went for a run, because I was in this boat for like 10 hours, mate, with all this fucking, like, I went there to like, get away from like, Western fucking people and tourists, and it was, I was just on a boat full of them, I was like, I've made a terrible mistake, bro. So I got to this, this town's village, whatever, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go for a run. So I ran like 20K or whatever, just didn't. Mm. And uh, like every time I ran past a group of kids, they'd like try and race me or run with me. And I was like, man, this is fucking sick, bro. This is cool as, oh. And then I got kind of sad because I was like, man, if you, you reap what you sow, innit? If, you're, if you've got money or you're traveling and you go to these places that don't, don't really have anything, um, and the only thing you buy is like, okay, I'm going to go somewhere that's cheap, cheap, and I'm just going to go and party and drink. Then all the places that sell like alcohol, they're just, just going to pop up everywhere because they're the only thing that people buy, right? Like shit food and alcohol. So that's what's going to become popular. And then you turn this place that like, yeah, didn't have much. Now you've turned it into like just this weird party, drinking, boozy place whereas if you went there and was like okay well i want to eat healthy and exercise then that's what's going to populate the area and so you have to be like you don't have to be but that's just something like came to my awareness you know i was running around this place and i was like man it's like the only thing that they sell here they try and peddle is like booze and cigarettes and i was like that says a lot about the people that pass through you know and it's like that's not that's not cool man, it was mm, good man yeah tourism i guess has a responsibility that is rarely considered i think yeah like i never i never considered that i never thought that and then i i was i was running through the mountains beautiful mountains bro like the, wait, wait was this laos sorry or? yeah Lao. Okay. yeah so we stopped is it laos or lao 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 it's spelled laos okay. I, I say lao i don't know i'm not i'm not from there maybe they don't get mad at me <laughs> i don't know but <clears throat> Yeah, it was just like these beautiful mountains, like across this road, up and down. And like it was smoking season. So up in the mountains, they'd burn a bunch of stuff like every year at the same time. And uh, it's really, really bad for the air. But it makes the sunset so pink because there's so much shit in the air. So uh, the, the so sunrise, it acts as a filter. Yeah, really. Like the sunrise and sunsets are studded, but you're running and you're like, <coughs> <laughs> but you know, and I was just like, that just, just came to me. I was like, wow, that's kind of like, that's tragic. You like, you really do have a responsibility. Like, even when you're doing things for, oh, this is a nice little trip away with the family. Oh, I let my hair down. Like, you just, you're just like, that responsibility follows you. And you can't get away from it. I was like, damn. That was a cool thing to realize, like, on my own, fucked. 20K, <laughs> 15K into a 20K run in, the, in the, some poor Asian village, mate. Like, that was, a, that was a cool moment. That's interesting, isn't it? Because everyone, a big part of everyone's year, you know, standard way of living, going to work nine to five, spending, you know, the majority of your income on rent, bills, food, etc., and then saving a bit aside. And most people, that bit that they save aside usually goes on the annual holiday to the beach, wherever you go. And people are seeking a holiday every year because they need a break, right, from the mundanity of life. And maybe they'd need that anyway, even if they were really fulfilled and happy with their life. But I think for a lot of people, that really is a big form of escapism. And you just highlighted something there that responsibility follows you wherever you go. Mm. And I think that's maybe what a lot of us are looking for when we go on a holiday. We're looking to just take off the burden. And yeah, sure, some of the burdens go away. We don't have to go to work. We don't have to, you know, if we were staying in a hotel, we don't have to cook. We don't have to go home and cook that dinner. We don't have to clean, et cetera, et cetera. But this idea that all of our burdens, all of our responsibilities are just alleviated mm. just because we've gone, you know, just because we've paid for a flight, paid for a nice hotel and gone to sit on the beach. Yeah, given, given 1,200 quid to Thomas Cook, I can do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> and it's that age-old saying, isn't it, that if you need to go to a certain place to be happy, how real is that happiness? should come from within mm. and if you're looking to go to a certain place to feel better about your responsibilities just going to another place just because it's sunnier and brighter and nicer sure it may actually help a little bit in the short term but really what changes mm. yeah i don't think happiness comes within them i think like 
purpose and meaning, fulfillment, um, contentment. I think these things come from within, but happiness, like you need something external to, to conquer, right? I think if you take away any kind of uh, stimulant or psychoactive chemical, whatever, like you can't drink, can't, can't get high, can't have sex. Like what makes you happy? The only thing that's left is like doing something difficult and winning, doing something you can't think you could do or something that's taxing and turbulent and overcoming it. That's, that's really it. That like name something else. I mean, like maybe watching a sunrise, but like, even that doesn't make you happy. Like think about how like, I'm happy. Like, Oh, everything's great. Oh, it's amazing. Oh my God. Like that, that doesn't come from a sunrise or a sunset. You know what I mean? Like moments of introspection and reflection and gratitude. Like those come from a sunset and sunrise, but like, Oh my God, that's amazing. Like, no, nah, that comes from winning a Fortnite game, mate. That's why Fortnite's popular, right? So how, how would you define happiness? Obviously, it's a difficult thing to do, right? Defining any emotion is difficult. Hmm. How would I define happiness? I get, you can, how can you put it into words, you know? It's just the, the, it's just the feeling you feel when something goes your way, <laughs> when, 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 yeah, happiness is just like your reward for doing something difficult, I guess. Like that's what it is. But it's different from contentment. Yeah. Cause you don't need that reward. Like contentment doesn't modulate. Like you can't, no one's eternally happy all the time. Happiness is the, is the peak. Like that's what, right. It's like, this is my life. Okay, so like happiness then, is like peak elation. Like, if I, if I talk about like my mood and how I feel, how things are going, like contentment is here. It doesn't, my life's fallen apart. My wife's left me. I'm miserable. Everything's great. Everything's amazing. I just want a trip to Disneyland. Like, it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't change. It's there, right? That's contentment. Cool. Things, everything's going amazing. Sound, I'm content. Everything's going terribly. Sound, I'm content. Like, that's contentment, right? It just doesn't go anywhere. Happiness is like, oh my God, my wife left me. I'm miserable. Oh my God, I just met a new bird. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> oh my God, I just went jujitsu. This is the best day ever. Okay, now I'm back to like, you know, and everyone, everyone's move, needle moves at a different pace, right? Like some things that excite someone and gets them up here will do nothing for another person. So it's like individual, but like that peak of like, happiness is amazing. Like that's happiness. And it doesn't, no, you can't live up there. You're like it doesn't. Who, apart from on drugs, sound mega? <laughs> That's not a solution, bro. <laughs> so, so because happiness is a deviation from baseline, it needs to be activated or the result of some kind of externality, yeah. some kind of external experience. Yeah, man. Like maybe you can sit there and meditate and I don't know, release some chemicals that make you happy, and then like, okay, cool, but like. Then yeah, then I'll change my mind. But find me someone who's done that. <laughs> find me someone who's locked themselves in a dark room for twelve hours and come out like, man, that was the, that was the best time of my life. Like no one, bro, <laughs> no come up, man. That was beautiful. I learned a lot about myself. That was incredible. I feel very peaceful and calm. But they're not like, yeah, put me back on that roller coaster, bro. Like, nah, <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> you know, and that's the difference to me. To me, you know. I would agree. I think there's. Uh difference between happiness and fulfillment. And I think you highlighted that well in the fulfillment and contentment, which are they the same thing? I, I think they're, they're not necessarily the same thing, but they're much more closely related. Sure. I think fulfillment and contentment are on a kind of steady keel and they're much less ephemeral. Whereas happiness, like you said, it's that peak. And you can't live there. You can't live at the peak. You can't live at the summit of the mountain. You've got mm -hmm. to come back down at some point. Um, so I, I think that's a key difference. And I ask every guest on this podcast, what's the meaning of life? Because mm -hmm. I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. um, without meaning to life, what, what's your compass? What's your direction? That's why I ask that question. Mm -hmm. I think that that's the question that will guide you in life. And, and lots of people say happiness. Which I think is a great answer because I think what what feels better than happiness, right? Happiness feels amazing, like you said, it's it's the peak. But for me, and Jordan Peterson says this: if your ultimate meaning to life is happiness, well, you might be 
very let down, your wife le leaves you. You, know, you lose a jiu-jitsu. You, you lose, you lose a jiu -jitsu, an jiu-jitsu. You lose an MMA fight. You have to come back to England after traveling in Asia for three months. So I imagine that. <laughs> how, how devastating would that be? <laughs> all the all these things in life that you know I me, mean, you don't know the the hand that life's going to deal with you. So happiness may be an incredibly difficult thing for you to come by. So instead, I think if you can, if your meaning to life is to find fulfillment and contentment, I think that's going to serve you much better, much mm. more reliably. And maybe you still want to chase happiness. Maybe you're not looking for something that's reliable. Maybe you still want to chase that ideal. So if your ultimate meaning to life is happiness, that might be what works best for people. That's maybe what they innately feel. But for me, I think contentment, fulfillment, look for, look for happiness. Don't chase it too much. Look for it. Take it when it comes and enjoy it. Mm. It's ultimately fulfillment and contentment is what I feel like brings me the most meaning. And I say that as someone that's quite inherently happy. Mm. Yeah, I think that follows like a little like the... Buddhist, Taoist, Stoic, like undertones is like that idea that, you know, the good and the bad, like there's still the, you should still aim for like stability within, regardless of what's going on outside. And then like, yeah, when the bad comes, like appreciate it, enjoy it, haha, <laughs> it's great. And then when the good comes, sorry, and when the bad comes, oh my God, this isn't great. I don't want it to be this way, but it is what it is. I shall endure, you know, and you need that. You need uh, an appreciation for what your baseline is. You, know, you need an appreciation for like, okay, this is sea level. So if I go to the depths, I know like I can swim back up. And if I'm at the peaks, I know that eventually I must come back down. And that's like an important thing for me anyway. So maybe some people aren't like that, bro. But then we call that BPD, right? Or like bipolar when you're just fucking, you have no, you have no, you have, you have no. There is no baseline. It's like, oh my God, this is how my life's going to be forever. Everything's incredible. Oh my God, this is how my life's going to be forever. I, I want to die. Like, and there's no appreciation for like, the sine wave uh, that is life, you know? I call that fucking mental illness, so. <laughs> How do people find that center, find that baseline? If they're, like you said, if they're living at those extremities and they're just switching from one to another, how do people center themselves and find some kind of stability? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Everyone's different, man. Everyone, everyone's like, what worked for me? Or what works for me? And what works for you? And what works for... Joe or some other jabroni or you know I don't know Rebecca I don't know Rebecca but <laughs> whatever Who's Rebecca? exactly I don't know just whoever <laughs> is uh is, is is different so you just gotta I don't know figure it out how do you figure it out I don't know man I don't, I don't know I don't know if anyone knew if anyone knew they'd be Bill Gates level rich no one knows no one's got it figured out no one's got a clue I think maybe that's a good starting point. Is it like no one's more like stable or <laughs> like got it together more than you? Like that's a good thing to, to start with. It's like no one has a fucking clue, mate. So just chill, relax. Stop cool. worrying that other yeah. people have it. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to you. Don't even listen to your fucking self. Just go out and just, just you know what I mean, just be there. Just be there for it. And you'll realize like, man, yeah, no one's got it. I think Rishi Sunak's got a fucking clue. No way. No way, bro. You think Bill Gates does? You think he knows how fucking Microsoft kernel works? Does he fuck, mate? You think if you took away Microsoft from Bill Gates tomorrow, he could rebuild it? Like he could write the software that made Microsoft as big as it is? No fucking way. So just chill. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Do you think a, a big element of success then is luck? Do you think it's largely luck? A largely it's not, it's luck. not largely. I don't think it's largely luck. I think... I think over the last like six, six, six to eight months, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that like my whole outlook on what it means to like how to, how to make it hasn't, hasn't been accurate. Like I, for, for my whole life, I was like, not whole life since I was like 12, maybe because I had any concept of like the wider world, maybe 12, 13, you know, it was like, if you just graft and work hard and stay in your lane and you're good, like that's it. Like just shut the fuck up, work hard, it's all great, it'll come, but like, it's not, it's not, that's not true, mate. It's not true. It's not just down to competence. Nah, nah, especially not in the West, man. Especially not here, bro. Especially not. It's like, like, look, plays a part. You have to be, 
you have to be in the right place at the right time with the right people, the right skill set. Like the right people and the right skill set. Like if you spend all your time developing the right skill set, pursuing the things you're interested in that matter, like if your philosophy is I want to make the world a better place and you spend all your time learning about medicine or engineering in the hopes of improving people's lives, then naturally you will find the same kind of people and then naturally that puts you in the right place. And then hopefully you just have to be there long enough and you get the opportunity. Like, yeah, cool, get it. Okay. So the only thing really you should do is focus on your 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 skill set, what you what you can do. Um but I think it's more mar- marketing and charisma and play, playing the game, like the, the, the game of poker of like we both have face down cards and I have to convince you that these are worth more than what you're paying for, even though they're probably not like that game. And it's not just in sales, like it's in, in every interaction, man, like in a. Well, it's sales and everything, pro- right? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, if you're abstracting away, like what sales is, but I mean, like when you hear sales or you think like professional sales, you think, oh, I have, I have, a, I have a thing. And I'm trying to convince you that this thing is worth what you're paying for it. Maybe it's probably worth more than what you're paying for it. But I know it's not. Otherwise, I wouldn't be making any money. And that's just like the game you're playing. Um, but then like the thing could be like your personality, could be your skill set, could be an actual product you have, could be how good you are in jiu-jitsu. I guess that's skill set. But you know what I mean? And uh, that that game is, I think, worth more than like how could you are that game that takes how how far you get more than anything else i think unless you're in the the right people at the right time or you're already yeah unless you're like already amongst where you need to be and those people who are good at the game can play it for you you know um yeah i don't know if i explained that very well but yeah. Yep, no, I think you did. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I hope so, mate. <laughs> Watch this back. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so, to go back to the um, kind of the chronological sequence of events, mm. you started off in Bali, mm. spent a month there. What was your what's your summary of Bali? Give a give a travel review. To hell, man. That's a big that's a big it's on the internet forever, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're asking me to give my opinion on it, an 20, entire country. Was, was it twenty twenty three, December twenty twenty three? Yeah. Okay, so your travel review for Bali, December yeah. twenty twenty. What was Bali like or your epoch? Bali's weird, bro. Bali so I was in Changu. Changu's like a a big uh, like the the biggest center in Bali. So I flew to Changu. Biggest, well, it's not even a city, right? Are there any cities in Bali? I'd say it's a city. Okay. I'd say Changu's a city, yeah. It's pretty, it's dense, mate. Dense. Like People living on top of one another. Not really. Like, it's all flat, but like dense. I don't, like, all, all hours of every day, like, the roads are just jam-packed. Okay. With, like, hundred, hundreds of just these little bikes, mate. Like, hundreds. And there'd be people on bikes with, like, a whole chicken coop or something, mate. It's madness, man. It was just, I, I was like, where are all these people coming from? Where are they going? Like, how? Like, how are this many people on the road at the same time, all the time? I couldn't get my head around it. Um, and, yeah, I think, I didn't I didn't do anything, mate. I didn't, I didn't like, look around. or I went to the beach a few times. I was peng, mate. The, the beach in Bali are peng, bro. Like, the sunsets were mental. And, um... Yeah, it was cool, but I just didn't, yeah, I didn't, just literally, man, wake up, I wake up, do a bit of coding, whatever, walk to the gym, train for like two hours, so, cold plunge, sauna, sick, walk back to the hostel, have a nap, do a bit of coding, walk back to the gym, do whatever, cold plunge, sauna, walk back, sound, that was my day, mate, I didn't go anywhere, or do anything, or see, see much, I didn't really talk to people, I didn't talk to people, but like, not out of, on purpose, I just be there minding my business, people talk to me, and I'm like, fuck. Oh, Okay, fine. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was cool. It was like, it was just, it was just sick, man. It was just cool. It was just nice. Um, I wouldn't live in Changu. Like, no way. No way would I live there. No way. Like, go there to, to, to see it, do your thing, whatever that is. If that's partying, there's plenty of that. If it's, you know, wellness and spirituality, like, there's plenty of that. It's a weird dichotomy. They're like the two industries that, like, 
blue chain go up. So that's just loads of fucking influencers that either party loads or do your loads of yoga. And it's just kind of weird, bro. Um, <laughs> like I keep getting recommended uh, like these these reels on Instagram of women screaming in the forest, like I'm in pain, and I'm like, that's the kind of like what. Yeah, you need to cut that in to this, like what I'm talking yeah. about. Okay. And uh, <laughs> I keep getting recommended these and they always make me think of Bali. Like, those are the kind of women that were paid to go like well, thousands of pounds on spiritual repeat in Bali. Where they just, why are they screaming in the forest? Uh, it's like, you know, whatever, why not? There's d- dude to do it as well. Dude oh, scream like, in the like forest. a form of meditation, but, like, they pay, release. Yeah, yeah, they pay to do it though. So like you'll, you'll pay some like person to take you on this like, I don't know, inner journey of you just screaming in the forest. <laughs> they probably do other stuff. You know, okay. Probably yeah. some drugs, and mm-hmm. then they go and scream. And so I'm like, that's cool. But those are the kind of mental cunts that would go to <laughs> go to Bali, right? You know, not me. <laughs> not me. <laughs> <laughs> so you leave Bali mm. after a month, go yeah. straight to Thailand. Yeah, because what I always had the intent of fighting in Thailand. I was like, I'm gonna go east. I wanna. I'd say that right far away. I'm going east. Mm. <laughs> I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go east. I want to do some scrapping. And so that was even in Bali. I was like, I'll fight in Thailand. So, so that I'm was that was the plan. You're gonna go east, go to Thailand yeah. to fight. Yeah, that was even even in, in Bali and so on, I was like, I'm fighting Thailand. I'm fighting Thailand. That's why I trained so hard. That's why I trained so much. I was pretty focused, man. Didn't drink still. Didn't smoke. Nothing. Just train. Bit of time on the beach. A lot of time eating food. That was it. I'm in Thailand. I was like, cool. I need to find a gym. It's going to put me in for a scrap. So I went to Chiang Mai in the north of Thailand. So I was in Bali. Some dude was like, man, it's so cheap. And I was like, yeah, cool. Whatever. Chiang Mai, is that, was that the city you... In Thailand, yeah. I can talk more about Thailand than Bali because I was there for okay. longer. I well, what, what was the city called in Bali? Because it sounded like... Changu. Changu. So Changu in Bali and then Chiang Mai okay. in Thailand. Right. So Wali Kha, so Wali Mai Kha. Yeah. So I, went, <laughs> so I went, I went Chiang Mai. It was like north of Thailand. So the... It's a big mountain. The highest point in Thailand is right next to Chiang Mai. I was like, that's quite poetic. Mountain man, here mm-hmm. I am. God's plan. <laughs> you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I went there, Chiang Mai. And the first thing I did, I was like, I need to find a gym to fight at. So I sent a lot of emails, found a bunch of people on Instagram, websites, whatever. I was like, hey, blah, blah, blah. My name's Perry. Here's, here's a video of my last fight. I'm here. I'm good. I want to bang. Sort me out. Not in those words, but essentially. <clears throat> Mugged off by fucking everyone. So I was like, fuck you, cunts. Three days later, I was like, I need to find a gym. I'm, I'm going mental. So I, I, I think I ran like 12K around Chiang Mai. So I went to like four different gyms. I was like, hey, what's up? You put me in for a fight. And they're like, oh, come back tomorrow. And I was like, cool. Uh, and then I went to the next place. And I was like, mm, this looks pretty dead. I'm not going to talk to them. And then like did that somewhere else. I was like, hey, can I fight? They're like, yeah, if you're good. Uh-huh. I was like, sweet. And then the last place I went was called Stink Club. And I was like, this looks pretty good. And um, I walked in and I was like, what's up? Can I train? They're like, yeah, I was like, can I fight? And he was like, come back tomorrow and see what, see what's up. So I went, uh, and like, that was the last gym I went to. I just, four, I just picked a bunch. I was like, I'll check this one out. One of them didn't exist anymore. So one was just gone and turned into some tourist place that sell joints on the side. I was like, not my jam. And then, uh, yeah, ran, ran back to my, my little room. Uh, next day I went to Sting Club because it looked, it just looked like, the best, like the, the pad holders and the people there looked out of four places. I went good, better than the rest. Uh, so I was like, cool. And then shadow boxing and that the next day, they're like, okay, yeah, you know some bits. And then that was it, bro. They're like th- three, three, four days fighting there. Like, yeah, you can fight on Saturday. I was like, yeah. Well, it's then, three, four days of training. Yeah, yeah. And they're, and, like, and they're like, yeah, you can fight Saturday. Like next Saturday. So it was like 12 days of like training. And then I had my first fight in Thailand. Uh, <laughs> so like, do they make money off you fighting? So everything I made fine, I just gave to them. Okay. Because that worked out cheaper than paying for membership. So it's like ticket. Right. Money. Okay. Uh, so that was cool. I just wondered why they were so keen to put you in for a fight. It's because it was good. Yeah. I mean, like relatively. I'm not saying I am good, like in the world, but like I was good enough for them to look at and be like, mm, yeah, you can bang, bro. Like, uh, I think if they were, if I went there and looked like a bag of shit, that wouldn't have been the case, mate. <laughs> But I've never done more Thai before. Put me in for a fight. They'd be like, mm, maybe. I, I bet they get quite a few Westerners coming in there saying that. You reckon? Oh, I think so. I don't know. I don't know. Didn't I, see my I, Not that I necessarily have my, what's the saying? Not foot on the gas. 
finger on the trigger, yeah. finger on the pulse, thumb on the pulse, yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Well, don't put your thumb on a pulse because your thumb has, an own, has its own pulse. Okay, that's That'll good. Mess tip. up the reading. Yeah, that's don't good do tip. that. Whatever they're saying is not that I'm necessarily <laughs> dialed into what's um, yeah. socially trendy. Yeah. But I, I think it's quite trendy for Western people to go to Thailand to do Muay Thai. Yeah, probably. And I imagine some of them think, oh, I'm, you know, I've done Muay Thai now for two weeks. I could do a fight. Maybe. But uh, there was a lot of people coming and going, like world training, but not 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 many of them seemed interested in fighting. Um, and it's hard, man. Still, like, still, even you know, doing it for. How many years I've been doing martial arts for now? I'm still like graph mate, like running however much every day and hitting pads hard, man. I hit pads hard like twice a day, every day, pretty much every day for like those for like a two week camp. But it's... yeah, what what does the training consist of there? Uh, Muay Thai gym in Thailand. Um, it'd be like I'd get there maybe half an hour before class finished, and then I'd do my foam rolling and stretching and warm up on the bag and then i just get like one-on-one -on -one pads for like 40 minutes like like hard like hard mate like just pads bar like 40 minutes but hard bro and um yeah just did that a little bit sparring didn't spar much and i'm great but i didn't want to you know what i mean like that that just going there and just like ripping pads mate just fucking rah, rah, like hard like but like every and then end of every round mate pissed in sweat like oh my god can i do this like for another 10 days like this is hideous like that's what I, that's what I really so want. Leathering, mate, like hard, bro. It's not just fucking pitter patter put. No, it's like whapa, whapa. I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's fucking mate. I had people stop it and watch him, bro. It's like it was sick, mate. It was sick, and um, I just wanted that, you know. Like you don't you know, you don't get that in uh, in England. Like you can't get that that one on one time with like someone who's been holding pads or doing more ties instead of like fucking eight. Like, what are you gonna, are you gonna get? You have to pay a wedge. You have to pay a wedge to get that in England. Yeah, that's a private session, and that's you know gonna I mean? cost. And that's dollar dollar bills, bro. And I was getting that for like fucking sh like sh showing up, fight money, fuck all wow, the time. Okay, that was sick. So that was that's just kind of how they work there. If you're fighting, you get one on one time. In Sting Club, yeah, I, I can't speak for any other club, okay. but like, yeah, even in ba even in Bali, bro, like I wasn't fighting, but they could see I was like decent enough. Like I'm doing it for some for a while. And they'd, they'd run classes, like, half the time on the back, half the time you're getting, like, one-on-one -on -one pads, be, like, 12 pad holders, like, in the class, class, whatever, class, yeah. And you just, uh, you'd alternate between hitting the bag and hitting pads. And if you're good, you get more time with better pad holders. If you're trash, you get more time on the bag, so, like, getting more basics, but someone who's maybe not as uh, adept at padding people. But because I was, like, half decent, I spent a lot of time with good pad holders, mate. And, like, yeah, just dropped the striker on loads. It's that like one-on-one -on -one time, bro. I mean, you could like, like all the little nuances of like, oh, your hips not turned over quite right, or try this, try that, or this little on your hook turn, like put your foot, like you don't. It's hard to. How do you get that if it's not one on one with someone with the eyes and the experience and the, to recognize it all, you know? Mm. So it was just a, uh, yeah, just tight. Just I didn't learn much really. I didn't learn anything major. Like, oh my god, how have I been doing this wrong for him? For five years just little tweaks man just tightened everything up and then doing it all under like that intense fatigue you can't get in sparring i can't fucking 110 roundhouse kick my mate in the face and sparring i can't 110 overhand right and sparring. i can't when i'm holding pads with someone who's good even even holding even if uh someone who's hitting pads with someone who's a shit pad holder you can't 110 roundhouse you go like, hey, put your hand here and oh yeah really good bro like that doesn't it can helps you appreciate the game it doesn't bring you on physically. You need that. It's a fight, man. You train for a fight. You need that physical. Like, rah, rah. You can't get that unless you've got a good, experienced pad holder. That's the only place you can get it outside of an actual fight. And so it's just good to just go and spam that for three, like, three months. Like, spam it, mate. <laughs> spam it for three months, you know? So, yeah, thanks for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> what was the sparring like? I know you said you didn't do too much of it. Was the sparring that intensity or was it very playful. Uh, I want to say very playful. Like so, Soma, they had like they had good, good high level guys, man. The spawn there was good. Um, the spawn there was good. Like I pretty much only did the MMA spawn, so it was like what I'm familiar with. I'm doing it for fucking however long now, and um, yeah, like training with Jimmy and doing those like dirty squad sessions with like pro guys. 
prepared me well, mate. I didn't feel out of my depth. I feel like I gave a good account of myself. I'm fucking good guys, bro. And um, yeah, just I was, it was nothing I wasn't familiar with, nothing I hadn't done before. You know I mean, like, really, it was just, yeah, good, good, good rounds, man. Sensible rounds, like, yeah. And then Thailand was chill, chill, chill. Apart from one guy who tried to bang me, so I was like, you better learn, boy. <laughs> That was sick. <laughs> that was that out of all the time I've spent in a ring or a cage, yeah. That was by far my best performance ever. No one's ever gonna see it. And it's like so upsetting. What what talk to me about that? It's just some dude came in, bro. It was like, yeah, we'll do some light sparring. So there was like four of us in a ring, like paired up. And uh the other two people I went with, sound bro, pit a pat bum, nice. This guy, the first thing he did is bat! And I was like, I'll give you one more. And he did it again, I was like sick <laughs> and i just managed to piece this guy up mate like it was incredible i've never i've never done it before i've never done it since i was untouchable bro and i'm just like it's never i'm never I'm never gonna experience that ever again and it's uh it's, it's so upsetting that it wasn't in an actual fight with people watching it was like a <laughs> gym no one's ever gonna see it it's like come on man typical but whatever it's, it's in here bro that's all that matters <laughs> That was a great day. <laughs> I felt like daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Make daddy say so proud. Oh, for real, bro. Yeah, man. Benatar striking. And the hero. Not the hero we want, the hero we need. <laughs> <laughs> daddy Jiu-Jitsu instructional drop-in mm. later this year. Daddy Tato. We should probably actually release a, a dad series of some kind. We should do. Yeah. How to oil check, one-on-one. But sponsored yeah, sp- by Yeah, sponsored, sponsored by Crafters <laughs> <laughs> Coffee. I mean, yeah. Bro. Mm. <clears throat> so the fight first fight mm. talk to me about that process take me through the whole thing what the venue was like going there warming up talk me through it there's <laughs> just some like outside stadium surrounded by bars right fucking there's like a strip club and then the ring and then just bars all the way around um and it's outside which is groovy um, and then they just play this Thai music the whole time. Uh, you warm up like outside a strip club, basically. <laughs> so it's all outside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's sick, mate. And then you walk outside the strip club, just do some shadow boxing, get rubbed down with Tiger Balm, whatever oil they put on you. Um, and then just get in the ring and bang someone, right? <laughs> it's, not much, it's not much to it. You know, like literally, imagine you've gone to a jiu-jitsu competition, it's outside, there's weird music playing, you warm up, you bang someone, you leave, it's chill mate, and there's strip club. <laughs> Mindset wise, compared to say your fight um, in BMF mm. last October, mm. what was the mindset like? Was it very much the same? Did it feel different? It's more relaxed out there. Like, take it very seriously in England. Um, like these these events, these amateur events, like more serious than they need to, I think. Um, but the, like the mindset of of like fighting, like my mindset going into the into a fight is always very specific, man. Like I've kind of found what what gets me firing on all cylinders the best, and that's just what I took to um, like all three bouts out there. Um, Corey Sandhagen's a good like martial artist to look at when it comes to like mindset. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm a big fan of like philosophy and Sun Tzu and Miyamoto Masashi and the Stoics and stuff. And uh, I just take that into yeah, I turn into to every like competition I do. Um, yeah, it was good. Blood for the blood god. You know, what makes the grass grow? Blood, blood, blood. How do we get it? Kill, kill, kill. You know? <laughs> That's the US Marines yeah. motto. Not motto, that's what they say. Something they chant. Yeah. An affirmation. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how the US Marines do affirmations. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do? Stack bodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a pro Muay Thai bout, right? Mm. So everything goes, elbows, you know, minus the headbutts, everything goes. Mm. Um, how does the first fight go down? It was like 30 seconds, mate. Swift switch kick to the body. That, that ended that. That was that. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. yeah Sharp, clean work. Yeah. Didn't feel challenged in any way. Oh, no. I'm always challenged, bro. You know what mm. I mean? There's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's never a gimme in a fight. You can put me in a ring with someone who's never trained before. And there's no guarantee that I'll bang them. No guarantee. 
I mean, he could do some spazzy shit and blow my knee out. I'll, I'll sick, you win. Like, <laughs> there's no, there's no gimmies, man. There's no gimmies. You have to respect him. Like, you'd be switched on from the very, very start. And uh, I think I was. I think that's why I won. So. Yeah. So first fight, quick TKO, KO to the body, mm -hmm. switch kick. Second fight, how does that go down? Uh, second round finish with leg kicks. That was cool, man. I, I spammed those leg kicks more than I should have. My shins, but I couldn't walk for like three days after that fight. Jet, Jet, I was stuck in bed, bro. I had to like shimmy myself to the bathroom. Like, it was good. Because your, your shins were that. Yeah, because I saw that like, damage. Yeah, like I knew I was hurting his legs. But he's also checking a lot of them. And I was like, but I know every time you check in, it's hurting you because I see it on your face. So I'm just going to keep keep spamming these kicks and hope that you give up before my shins do. Because <laughs> I was like, you went down in the second. I could barely stand up. And I was like, thank fuck. Because <laughs> if I throw one more kick, I would have I would have TPO'd myself. <laughs> so, yeah. that was. I wonder how many rough. days he was in bed. I don't know, he was fighting like two weeks later, mate. Yeah. How hard as what it was like. But <laughs> mm. It's interesting, isn't it? Sometimes people win a fight. And then they go to a hospital mm, yeah, and the yeah. loser doesn't. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. But really, like, I was in clip, mate. But it was all right. It was all right. It's good. Okay. Good experience. Shins are hard as fuck now. Yeah. <laughs> what we'll be doing? Got that, a good yeah. amount of conditioning in. I think it's well, that's hard. that hard uh, pad work, right? Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Just, that just takes time. Do you think road ring conditions your shins? Builds your shins, like kind of calluses them for kicking? Yeah. Because that's, like that's an old school... Um, Muay Thai school of thought yeah, that you should do road work because it toughens your shins. Yeah, I think so. But then, like, it's it's not just it's not just your shins. It's like all the the, the joints and ligaments in your ankle, like the, sh the muscles that have to get used to, and like the nerves. Like your shins might be hard, but it's still gonna hurt just as much because you've not like deaded the nerves or that you're not used to that impact over and over again. So even if you know your risk of breaking your legs gone, your ability to constantly deliver a hard shot to someone's leg or arm or you catch on an elbow that could take you out more than someone who's used to just throwing their leg at something really hard and like you know the shit little bones in your foot like they need to harden up and get used to it it's like it's not just not just your shins you know but yeah i think we're going to help yeah for sure third fight mm. how was that go down that was sick mate. that was fucking sick bro it's like some big swedish dude and it was just like four rounds of me just piecing him up I didn't just piece him up bro. he got some good you know what I mean he got some good shots in but it was like the end of the second round I split his elbow open with an elbow and I was like yeah now we're going then I just took off from there you know I probably won the first round um, I know I ate a bunch of knees but they weren't hurting so I was like yeah gas yourself out mate. I'll, I'll, I'll throw this round away you can I don't know, pit a pad with your knees I don't care and then uh, yeah it was just good man. I, just, I, mean, I just walked forward and just wanted to bang him mate <laughs> so I didn't really take a step back and uh, yeah it was just good man it was just sick it was just like to be able to throw elbows and knees like in a fight against a person and just be covered in something like there were a bunch of Spanish like a group of like 12-15 Spanish people um, that watched the fight and then they saw me like a couple of days later and they're like oh come over and I was chatting to them and like you were getting blood all over us in that fight and I was like ha ah, yeah nice sorry <laughs> but nice <laughs> and they're like no no it was great I was like yeah it was <laughs> I just love it like it was just sick man it was just sick I didn't I didn't know if I won like that wasn't even crossing my mind I just know every time I came back to the corner there was more blood on me and I was more happy and I was like this is fucking sick that, um, ha that was happy yeah bro yeah, yeah. I was like this is fucking yeah. like it's sick mate it's sick you know and then um yeah I got my hand raised that was a that was a nice little bonus got fight of the night that was a nice little got fucking massive trophy for that bro and um did you bring it back with you no nah, I did I just gave it to the gym I was like you keep this put it up oh that's get you, nice get you some, get you some, maybe get some people through the door you know what I mean yeah. like, it wouldn't happen if they didn't go yeah you're sound you can scrap three times in six weeks <laughs> you know <laughs> so uh, yeah it was uh, just good man it's just good it's just good yeah I could have lost that I'd still be saying the same thing that was just sick I, I really didn't I was I wasn't surprised I got my hand raised but like I was like did, he, it, did it go to decision yeah I was like but like if he did I would have been like Tom, don't care that was sick <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yeah, it was good. I, I definitely got an appreciation for the cut men in, in England as well. Like, they do such a good job. Um, like Sometimes you see people go back to the corners fucking covered in blood, like eyebrows cut open and that. 
and then the start of the next round they're like looking clean as fuck until they take a jab to the face it opens back up but like start of the round they look like nothing happened and that wasn't the case there. <laughs> that wasn't the case <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's good man like really good so three fights in six weeks after you finish those three fights i remember you saying to me before the third one that you felt at that point yeah one more and then i'm happy to take a break and mm. got what i wanted out mm. of them so after that third fight what's going through your mind what's happening and my visa was running out like not long after that so i was like mm, okay i need to leave thailand anyway whether for a visa runner to go somewhere else so i was like okay well i know i know i want a bit of time out from training because man it's fucking hard bro hard Yeah, hard man. Just being like like redlining for that long, like and always having like I'd win, and then like two days later you fight again. Yeah, so immediately there's just like looming like I'm gonna have to scrap, and that like, that's a big thing, man. Like just there all the time. It's I'm, a big weight, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like you, you know you don't get away from it. Like I, I ride it well now, you know, but it's like it's always there. You wake up, it's there. You fucking training, it's there. What are you eating? Well, you have to fight this guy. You better be careful. You know what I mean? What are you doing? Oh, if you do this, that might be the difference between winning and losing. You can't, you know what I mean? Everywhere, every decision. So I was like, I need a break from that. And also like, I just want to, like I'm an Asian, man. I enjoy it. Eat some shit and, and look around and do bits. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, I need to go to Lao. I'll go to Lao for like 10 days or like a week, whatever. Chill out. I mean, just lift some weights, do some shadow box, do some running. Go to a lot of, I went to a lot of temples in Thailand with a couple in Lao as well. Like that was, that was sick. Um, What's the religion in Thailand? There's a lot of Buddhist temples, man. I went to a lot of Buddhist temples. That was cool, man. Like, that was cool, you know? To sit under a giant golden Buddha, like, you really feel humble there, bro. And, like, that was good. I'm glad I did that because it's easy. You know when you're winning and you're, like, winning dominantly, it's easy to have the best thing in the fucking world. I'm the man. Like, no one can touch me. Worship me. But it's like you go into those temples, you see an actual, you know, depiction of a god, and you're like, no, stay humble, boy. Like, you might be great, but you ain't that. Like, sit down, check yourself. So I'm grateful. Um, I'm grateful for that. I really, I don't, uh, yeah, that was good. Um, da, da, da. Yeah, so I went to Lao. Uh, and then in Lao, I had the choice to, in my head, it was like, I'll either, I either, basically, I have to either go to Bangkok and try and scrap and do it in Bangkok. And then maybe that's my road to one <laughs> or come back to England. So those are my two choices, really. I didn't have the money or the means to make enough money to, to do either. And if I went to Bangkok, that's like cutting into my flight home money. So I'm like, maybe I'll, if I fuck it in Bangkok, I'm fucked. So I was like, mm. I'm in an RN. And I got a message from my mate saying, do you want me to work with the best man? And I was like, that that put me over the edge. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, the, the nail in the coffin. Like, I was coming home. You know what I mean, and I, like family members went well and stuff so, as well. So that was always like something I was worried about. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll come home. Uh, and now I'm now I'm here and not in Bangkok. <laughs> Love it. So uh, give me the summary of Thailand. How, how long were you in Thailand? Two months. Two months. Yeah, two months. Eight weeks. Three fights. <laughs> I think that's cool, man. I mean, I think that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's uber cool. Like you just went out <laughs> on your ones to Thailand, yeah. rocked up to a gym, said, "Can I fight?" Yeah, sound three, four days training. <laughs> Got a fight at the weekend. You went out there, three Muay Thai fights in six weeks, won them all. Yeah, I think that's yeah. pretty fucking cool. Thanks, bro. To say it lightly. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. And then, yeah, came back to England. Best man. Trying to figure it out here. Definitely um, reaffirmed like a lot of things I was saying before I went about the UK, why I don't like it and stuff. I was like, yeah. No way perfect. And I said this, like, there was good days, there was bad days. It was like, oh, I'm in Thailand, I'm in Bali, everything's fucking great now. All my life, all my problems are gone and I'm just super happy. That responsibility hasn't just yeah. gone out the window because you're on holiday. Exactly. Or, not obviously you're on holiday, but you know what I mean? Yeah. Referencing what we said earlier. Yeah, you know, like, it It was, um... no, sorry, just going to suck for whoever's watching with headphones on. <laughs> um, it was, um... yeah, there was good days and bad days. And like I said this when I got back, I was like, you just got to pick your suffering, man. 
Like, there are pros that come from living in a cold, wet country. There are pros, bro. There's no mosquitoes. You know what I mean? Like, when it's cold, you can put more warm stuff on and then you're warm. Like, that, there's, there's props that come with it. Like, everything's clean, man. Like, you walk out the street and, like, oh, there's chewing over, bro. But, like, it's clean. Um, and then you go to a hot, somewhere hot. It's like, you got to have, how many showers a day you've got to have. Like, it's fucking sticky. And you're, you're, like, I get eczema when it's cold and, like, dry. And I'm swapping out for heat rash. I mean, like the, the discomfort is not really different. It's not, the levels aren't different. Just the type is, 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 is changed. But I choose that. I would, I would rather that kind of mm. discomfort, that kind of like inconvenience, whatever, than, than the one that comes from living somewhere cold and wet and gray. Yeah, I mean, you're going to contract. I mean, the probability is you're going to contract more viral infections living mm. somewhere cold. It's going to be more viruses, more colds and flus around. But if you go somewhere hot, okay, yes, because of the sun, um, you're going to have less viral infections, but you're going to have more bacterial infections because of the heat mm. and the humidity. Yeah, you know, you just got to you got to pick what you what you want. Like, what, what, when you close your eyes and you picture like this, is what my what my life look like? Is it? Like, what is it? And then just try and find a way to get that happen. And maybe you don't, and that's okay too. You know what I mean, like, it's okay. It's okay if your life sucks. Like, it's okay. I know we don't want our lives to suck, right? We don't want our lives to suck, but it's okay. Like, you're not doing anything wrong, probably. Probably not. Like, you're probably not. I mean, if you're nice to the people around you, and you're doing your best to, like, you know, not be a piece of shit, you're probably not doing anything wrong. Like, just, it's cool. It's good. It's okay. It's okay. Like, maybe it'll get better. Maybe it won't. But it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You know? I think a lot of people need to hear that. Like, it's okay. It's okay. I mean, I, I think you've implied this anyway, but I know you prefer Thailand to the UK. Is that fair to say? Yeah, 100%. I prefer, like, Antarctica to the UK, <laughs> probably. What, what, what exactly is it about the UK? You want me to go on a massive rant about why the UK is a bag of shit? Sure. No, I'll just think, I'll send you a video and you can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. Like, mate, like, what? The roads are shit. Government shit, economy shit, food shit. I mean, I, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like, that's it. <laughs> like, I, I, okay. I think I think the country's in a situation. The road, the roads in Thailand are shit, but the food's pang, mate. The weather's pang, mate, mate. You know, like the people are just nice and and, and friendly, and not over the top, like fake friendly. Just sound, just sm sound. And I walk around fucking wherever in England. It's, why and people are terrible drivers over here and i just i just don't like it man i just, I just fucking hate england man i don't like bangers and mash bro i think bangers and mash is shit there's some people right that will go and fight a war over bangers and mash yeah i'm not one of them bro give me some fucking cow soy or a burrito or something with some fucking spice mate not your fucking gammon and chips mate shove up your ass you shit <laughs> I just, I mean, what the fuck? Even the language is ugly. That's why I'm trying to learn other ones. You know what I mean? <laughs> I fucking hate it, man. I fucking hate it. You know? I like to be Mr. Positive, Mr. Yeah. Optimistic. <laughs> but I, I, th I think the country's in a situation. I think if we're not going to say that, then we're just putting our head in the sand and we're just basically kidding ourselves into thinking we're living in some... What's the world? Pandora? It, is, is that the word? Pand not Pandora. Paradise? Yeah, something like that. The word escaped me. Utopia. Uh, Utopia. I don't know where I got Pandora from. Pandora's box. Yeah. Pandora's box mean? has been opened. Pandora's box is like a box, and when you open it, a bunch of things escape, and you can't put them back in it. Okay. So right. it's used as a, a, a term of like, so when uh, ChatGPT came out, a lot of people said that's a Pandora's box. They have to like open it. Uh, you can, but you can say that about a lot of things. COVID was a Pandora's box. For, of. Well, a whole load of things, right? Like the virtualization of pretty much everything. Yeah. I mean, all the. Da I wouldn't say. I'm going to say all the damage. The I wouldn't say it's. I wouldn't say it's a Pandora's box. It's only a catalyst, right? Like it yeah. sped things up, but it didn't like introduce a bunch right. of things that weren't there before. Okay. And that's kind of what Pandora's box is. Analogous maybe not to. directly, but downstream. That's why I say catalyst, because okay. these things these things existed before, right? But they weren't like as prevalent or 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 uh, pervasive as they were. Uh, until after or during COVID, right? Like, um, fucking contactless, everywhere, you know? But it, it wasn't a Pandora's, it, like, it didn't open the door. It just like sped things up. I said Pandora's box would be like the internet being created, Pandora's box, or like, 
Uber maybe? No, I wouldn't say that Pandora's box. iPhone. I, the touch screen iPhone. That was Pandora's box being open. To always having a personal computer that can do everything though. Maybe that was BlackBerry. Either way, you know what I mean? Like mm. I would say that was, that, that you could use that as an analogy for like Pandora's box. I think applies well, okay. you know? Yeah. I think chat GPT and like this whole AI thing, that's a really good one. That's like that's what Pandora's box. Is like. We ain't putting that. You can't, you cannot put a lid on that. You can't put it back in. Like a lot of the stuff, like contact lists, you could get rid of that tomorrow and it wouldn't really, no one's gonna throw a riot over that, right? No one's, no. But you, like, you, and like realistically you could, but you can't, you can't do that like AI and shit. It, it's just done. Like we're on that road now, bro, to, to the end. And it's getting fat, man. This roller coaster speeded up, bro. Everyone feels it though. Going back to UK, like, everyone feels it, right? Everyone, everyone's like, man, things aren't good. No one knows why. No one can really put their fucking, but even someone who doesn't follow politics or know anything about fucking the economy, doesn't put the news on ever, will go outside and be like, hmm, something's wrong. Everyone feels, everyone notices it. And uh, that's fucking says something, bro. Like things ain't good. Things ain't good, man. And you see it in people's faces and how they act and you see it on the news and you see it in the prices for paying for things. Like people, people know, but they don't know what it is they know, but they know, you know? Say no one more time. <laughs> I, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. To, to finish that uh, train of thought that I was on, you're going to disagree with this statement I know, and I say it to a lot of people, and you know, some people agree with me, some people think I'm off my rocker. England is the greatest country in the world. <laughs> when the sun sh- like it is today, when the sun's shining, when the sun's shining, okay, yeah. England is the greatest country in the world. I'm talking about the actual country, the geography. I love England. The geography of England is beautiful. Go out to Shropshire, any county in the UK, they've all got, each part of the country's got something different different to offer. You know, we're an island, we've got so much coastline, you're never more than three hours away from the coast. Mm. The the problem is, Mm. we've fucked up the environment in a big, big way. Mm. So we don't actually have scenes anymore. Mm. We don't have cold winters where it snows. Mm. Snow's fun. Snow's beautiful to look at. We don't have that in the winter. We've just mm. got cold, wet, and gloom. Mm. Okay, so our winters are messed up. English summers, traditionally beautiful. The birds are tweeting, the bees are buzzing, sun's in the sky, yeah. lovely, hot, proper hot summers. Yeah. You can go down to Cornwall, you know, a- anywhere on the coast. It's going to be a-, a lovely day on the beach. We don't have that anymore. I mean, yeah. you know, Many thanks to the sunshine for rearing its head for the past few days. It's out right now. Looking forward to soaking it up later today. But God, this summer, last summer was atrocious. This this summer so far has been atrocious. Mm. That is massive. Mm. And that, in my opinion, I I think this is the reason why we've fucked up the environment. Mm. Um, With the way we- chemtrails, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is going very conspiratorial. (laughs) (laughs) No, but the way we've, um, you know, depending on what you want to blame it on, Clearly, the way that we're living on this planet is not serving this mm. planet as, as an ecosystem. Mm. The sun's our life source. God, like unless you're used to just living in a country which traditionally has always been cold, dark, gloomy, your biology is not equipped to deal with rainy, cloudy days every single day in June, July, and August. Mm. So I, I, I think that's massive. I, I think climate change, whatever you want to call it, is having a massive impact on us. I think the other thing is the cost of living. I don't know if I sound like some kind of politician or everyone's saying it, but it's true. The cost of living is ridiculous. People are working hard. We talk a lot about nine to five. Yeah, I think working nine to five is a psyop. It's not, it's not what we're meant to do. But God bless, you know, society. Pretty much everybody is holding down a job, working hard, or, you know, at the very least showing up and doing their job and they're still struggling for money. They're like, like I said, they're putting aside those pennies and they're barely saving for that annual holiday and I can't blame them for wanting the, the escapism all, of a, an annual holiday. Mm. Exactly, if they're saving at all, I, I think most people aren't. Mm. Most people, if they are going on that annual holiday, they're having to put it on a credit most card. Most people are going to debt, mate, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, everyone's on the credit card. Um, the cost of living is insane. People are working so hard and they cannot afford to live can't afford to live healthily, that's for sure. Mm. You know, food, the price of food is just f- through the roof. It, it, it's ridiculous. The cost of living combined with the environment and downstream from both of those things, which has become a, 
like a massive issue in itself is health. Mm. And when I say health, it's everything, physical, mental health, is emotional health, it's all interconnected. So put health as, as you know, in, in one basket because of those things. And then in, or, in and of itself, everyone's health, not everyone's, most people's health is in the gutter mm. in this country. And if you haven't got your health, you've got nothing. There's no happiness. We've, there's no happiness without health. This contentment, try being content when you're just chronically unwell. There's my cynical rant. Yeah. How, how do we fix it? I don't think it's, it's not cynical. Why yeah. is it cynical? Well, well, yeah, I suppose, I suppose it's not, is it? I, I, just, I, I, don't, I don't like to talk about the natives. But when, you're, when, but when the natives are there, you've got to talk about them, haven't you? What's, what's the alternative? Take? Exactly. Well, pretend, pretend they're not there. That's stupid. Yeah. Then to the truth would be destroyed by it, man. You can't just fucking... <laughs> like, mm. focusing on the positive might be better for your head, but it's worse for the world. Yeah. You pick, take your pick. That's right? it. That's it. In the short term, it's it's nice to hear, isn't it? And it makes everyone feel better. It makes everyone be able to deal with it better in the short term if you're positive and up to. And it's good to be optimistic because we can still be optimistic and say there's a way yeah, we can hope, change hope this. Hope and faith. Yes, yeah. that's different to po- blind positivity. I think positivity is great, mm-hmm. uh, and you know I'm a positive person, but mm. I don't think we can just be blindly positive about this. Like the country is in, uh, I think, a pretty dire situation. Mm. I don't see how it's going to change. How do we fix it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you need to give us the answers. Okay. Okay. I need to give. I need to fix England. Okay. So your I've, prime minister I've tomorrow. Got, I've got five years to fix England. N- Nigel Farage yeah. wins this election yeah. and appoints you, Perry Clayton. Yeah. Why is like, Nigel Farage with it? I don't know. I hear he's doing really well. Is he? I don't pay attention to politics. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Farage is doing really well. I don't pay attention to politics. That's just something I heard. I, it's, that's what I heard a couple of days ago. Okay. Apparently, he surpasses the Conservatives in the polls. That's <laughs> might be, might be complete fake news. I I I I um five. I don't think I don't know if five. You can fix it in five years. I think you take 40, 14 years, whatever long it's been. Conservative just fucking slowly gutting the country, like. How do you say you've been living like total shit for 14 years? How do you then say, okay, I've got five years to get healthy? Like, could you? I don't know. If you're fucking 800 pounds overweight and you fucking don't have a shred of discipline, like, how do you go from that to, nah, I'm healthy? Like, you can't. Like, you can't. <laughs> you know, you've, 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 those scars are never going to go away, you know? And uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think everyone kind of feels like a shift's coming. Like we're, 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 things are speeding up, right? Like the rate of innovation speeding up, the, the, the amount of conflict that's part of mainstream knowledge and popular culture, like what we all know about, that's speeding up. Um, like how often these conflicts are, arise and made public because there's always conflicts in the world man we just don't they're not part of the news cycle but now it's like more and more and more um how the gap between the richest people on the planet and then everyone else or the poorest is getting bigger and bigger and bigger like it's all just it's all just and it's getting faster and faster and faster i don't know man i don't know like I'm a big, but like it's we've asked for this though, man. Like we fucking we've fucking asked for this, mate. Like every time we renewed a Netflix ex- subscription or fucking bought something off Amazon instead of going up the shop down the street and supporting our fucking neighbors. Every time we've gone, hmm, nah, I, I see my neighbor, but I don't want to talk to them because I'm feeling fucking stressed and antisocial today because I can't afford anything. Like we've we've done this to our fucking selves every time we've either voted for a cunt or not voted at all. Are not kicked off when fucking we've had three prime ministers in the last like 12 months and none of them has been voted for but we're just like yeah we'll just keep cracking on like we've asked for this man we deserve it like there's nothing you want to fix it fix yourself bro i mean but that's, what, that's the way to go it. about it rather than focusing on like the the macro people it starts with the individual do you think that's how to go about it we need to focus on ourselves first and foremost and then we can start organizing then, then we can start getting together and making bigger social political shifts yeah i think so man i think so like how do you know what fucking it, let, let's say we okay you and me start some massive movement and gains traction and now we're top four biggest movements in the country if i'm if i'm not part of that any four of these big movements and i need to decide which one to join how the fuck do i do that apart from educating myself like how how 
you happy, right? It starts with that. And then I can join the movement and then we can start indoctrinating people and stuff. And, you know, a big naked cult on the beach, you know? But until then, it's like you, like you need, you need, you're like, you need to, bro. Otherwise, you're just a fucking leaf in the wind. And that's not a good, not a good way to be, man. It's not a good way to be. It's not a good way to be. It isn't. So, yeah, I don't know. See things that are close as if they're far away and see things that are far away as if they're close. Like, that's a cool little thing that I try and think about. Like, what does that mean? How can I do that? Like, I think about that a lot. Um, as above, so below. That's another good one. Like, I see that a lot. Like, the micro becomes the macro and the macro becomes the, the micro and it kind of dances. So if you look at macroeconomic trends, like, you can kind of, not make it accurate, but you can kind of like get an insight into an individual. And if you look at an individual deeply, like deeply, eventually it's going to give you insights into the macro. And so like to look at one or the other too much, I think it's not good. I think that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, man, fuck knows, dude. I don't know. Cause everyone just like, okay, England's fucked. Let's leave. That's doesn't, that's, that's not, that's not the solution, right? England's fucked. Let's let, let's what? I, I'm, I need to keep doing my nine to five, but I'm going to fix things when I've got fucking a family to look after. I'm knackered and I don't know anything because I haven't got time to learn. Like, what do you do? How? You can't. You're fucked. <laughs> but maybe this is it though. Like, empires rise and fall. How long has it, like, you know, the world been dominated by Western powers? Maybe it's just our fucking end of the epoch, mate. Maybe it's fucking China and North Korea's time to just be like, run the show. I don't know. I don't know, man. No one knows. No one fucking knows. My point. No one. No one has a clue. No one knows, mate. Like no one. We'll just like, like no matter how ideologically driven you are, if you've got two kids and a missus, you ain't. You're gonna go to work, bro. What the fuck else are you gonna do? Let them go hungry. Oh, we. I don't agree with this government, babe. We're gonna have to starve. Like that's not. No. No one's fucking choosing that, right? So. <clears throat> work it out work it out work it out i can't i don't know no one knows just gotta fucking i don't know get as fit as you can get as smart as you can and work as hard as you can towards something you think is worthwhile whether or not it is worthwhile don't know who knows no one <laughs> like no one mate you know everyone wants someone to give them the answers but there are no there fucking there aren't any everything you learn just creates like two more questions like that's it. Donnie Kruger effect, bell curve, all of it. It's like, you, you, there's no answers, bro. It's just a fucking big fractal circle of fucking learning something and then that making more questions. You get those answers, there's more questions. Like, you just gotta fucking. <laughs> We've optimized for money, you know? We've optimized for like the spectacle. Every cunt that fucking follows Jake Paul and watches his boxing match, like, why are they so popular? And why are people who are legitimate, hard-working martial artists getting fuck all attention and fuck all money, having to like, I don't know, sell toe pictures to fund their fucking, you know what I mean, their martial arts journey. When the, you can just be a, you can be a loud mouth cunt, you can just make a load of noise and that will get create you enough tension where Under Armour wanna fucking sponsor you or whatever. Or these big boxers wanna fucking fight you and make you millions on a world stage and Netflix wanna fucking pay for that. Like, we're asking for this shit, man. By watching that bollocks, like, <laughs> and that's like one specific example that I'm like more aware than most of, but it's across the fucking board, bro. Like the Kardashians shouldn't be popular and everyone should know who Alan Turing and Roger Penrose are and no one fucking does. You know what I mean? Like that's, we've done this to ourselves. Like, so I can't be mad. I mean, I can't be mad. Mm. Like, I can't be mad. We've asked for this. <laughs> Sound. Fuck you. <laughs> you know? Sound. Yeah. we're prioritizing noise the spectacle as you said over competence intelligence fitness mate look at nurses bro i mean these should be the most like nurses and doctors should be the most like valued and coveted members of society they get fucked and then we've got just twats and pretty people that we're just throwing money at all right work it out that's not right but everyone's still going to watch Mike, Jake Paul and Mike Perry fight or Jake Paul and Mike Tyson fight. Everyone's going to watch that. But no one's going to protest by the NHS. So that's your... <laughs> I wonder what's caused that. I suppose, obviously, it's a multitude of things. But I wonder what's caused us to go with the easy, to, to just indulge in these 
spectacles in the in the shallow and to not pursue things that are hard but more meaningful it's a race that it's it's all these organizations that have all this power and like influence now they're basically tech tech organizations right of a big probably the most influence over what popular culture looks like if you could point at any one thing right they're in a race for grabbing the most attention and they have to be right that's where they make their money based on how many people are scrolling through their shit for the longest amount of time gets them the most ad views makes them the most money like that that's their responsibility for the shareholders because late stage capitalism means that money is the most important thing not human happiness not the environment not reducing human suffering making money is the most important thing that's what we've the the model that we've chosen okay because anyone who's chosen another model has been eradicated by the people who chose the model of money being the most important factor because it allowed them to have the most influence and the most power over the most amount of people right like i think that makes logical sense there's nothing like crazy and stupid about that uh outlook but TikTok, instagram netflix all of it's competing for people's attention and so anything that doesn't interest you long enough to keep you staring at a screen and infinitely scrolling that makes people go mm, i'm gonna turn that off like doesn't get prioritized by the algorithm and what's getting prioritized is increasingly like short form content and dopamine reducing bullshit that makes people go duh, 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 duh. like it's designed like there are teams of people that have billions of dollars spent on their capability and their r d and their implementation like there are people getting paid a fucking lot of money bro who are really good at just designing infinite scroll screens and looking at the data and making sure that as many people stay in this loop as possible how the fuck do you fight that man well, you, doesn't matter how disciplined you are, bro. It doesn't matter what you're made of. You fight, you try and fight that battle, you lose that nine times out of 10, bro. Like 999,000 times out of a million, like you'll lose that. You'll lose that battle. And um, like, we're just in a, we're in a spiral down, bro. Like we have to be game theory, right? Like if, if one per if you're in a, all in a football stadium, everyone sat down, everything's great. We're all cushy, we've all got a great view. If the person at the front stands up, Everyone has to stand up to get the same view. So now our, our collective experience is worse because now we're stuck instead of being nice and comfy chairs. But that's the, that's the reality of the situation. Any company that doesn't engage in this game, that doesn't play this, will die out. And can't do that. Late stage capitalism, bro. We need the money. Got a, a piece of shareholders. Like it has to. I don't think that's conspiratorial or crazy. I just think you look at the fucking situation we're in and we look at the competition that's arisen, which is AGI and attention. Like... That's the reality of it. And like, we've not just stood up in the stadium. We've started building fucking giant blocks in the front, but now the people at the back can't afford to do the same. So no one can see the game. It's just the fucking people at the front and they're just getting higher and higher and higher and higher. And we're all fucking like, bro, this, I, I used to enjoy this, but now I'm just stuck. So I need to build my own. I need to build my own shit little, <laughs> shit little stand so I can get a view, but I can't build it fast enough because everyone's, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't bro, brother, you can't. And so, I don't know. And the only reason I'm aware of this is because I've had the luxury of being able to fucking spend months and months and months just learning mad shit, like learning. And yeah, unless you go to university, but even going to university, you know, yeah, you're being I, taught yeah. things, right? Like, I, I don't think university, and this isn't hating on universities. This isn't me telling people not to go to university, but I don't think like university is the path to intelligence. I mean, it can be, of course. Mm, I think intelligence it, is a myth, bro. I think it's made up. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's made what, up. What do you mean by that? I think it's, I, th I think like I spent like a lot of time going into the like machine learning and neural networks and then the underlying math behind it. And to me, it's just, you've, they've quantified the learning experience as you have an initial guess and you have an, a, a desired outcome. And then your initial guess, which is whatever your like all the input you can possibly get. You walk into a, a new environment, let's so say you've never done jujitsu before. Your best guess is the action you take, given all the information you get from just looking around. Okay, and so your best guess, you have a desired outcome, which is okay. Well, this is jujitsu. Uh, I'm gonna make a wild guess that if I can be on top of him, um, 
that's good. So that's my goal. I'm going to try and be on top of them. That's jujitsu. And so I'll make my best guess onto like what actions to take. And oh, I've ended up on the bottom. So now I know that this set of actions that was produced by this input, which is my, you know, perception of the environment, wasn't a good one. So now it's changed. Now it's a little bit closer to what I think the outcome should be. Okay, so now I'll try this instead. Okay, well, it took him a little bit longer to get me from on top of him. So I know that that was a, a better than the last one. You just keep going, you keep adjusting, 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 and maybe you overshoot a little bit. And then maybe you go back and you undershoot a little bit. But it's like every time you do it, you get more and more specific about what needs to change and what needs to improve. And your, your guess gets closer and closer to your desired outcome, which becomes more and more specific. And like that process, like we call that intelligence, right? Like we, we call this ability to be exposed to something complicated or with a lot of variables um, that requires like really specific solutions. We call that intelligence, but it's, it's not, it's not, it's just fucking that, that, it's that process. Yeah. yeah. Well, how, how do we define intelligence? Like intelligence generally, right? Is someone who can, how quickly you can learn something, right? Like that, right? If you, if you, if you know nothing about economics and then two weeks later, you, you're advising the prime minister on economic policy, which like, that guy's really smart or like, how well you can answer a question, how much you know. Like that's another indicator for intelligence, right? Like, but then even then, intelligence is largely not even subjective, but it's dependent on someone's ability to communicate what's in their head. If we didn't speak the same language, you would think I'm a fucking idiot, right? I could know everything you know times 10, but if I can't communicate it, it doesn't matter. Your perception of me is he's a fucking idiot. Even though if you put in front of me, like, I don't know, Go, I was in complete this theorem, and I could fucking one for one do some shit with it. You'd be, you'd be like, oh wow, that's crazy, that's so smart. But then that's just practice. It's just, it's just like it's just not a thing. Like it's not a thing as a smart person, just someone who's experienced a lot and knows things and problem solve. But like problem solving is just fucking trial and error. Like it is, man. It's like there's, there's no, there's no one's like intelligence isn't a thing. I, don't, I really don't think it is. It's just practice, man. It's just hmm. practice, and you've practiced a lot of like arithmetic people like, he's smart like he's not just practice a lot i mean like this doesn't it's not it doesn't exist i don't think it exists i don't think it's a thing i think if it was a thing we wouldn't be able to quantify it like we do you know what i mean like it's not, <laughs> it's not it's yeah a, there's a difference between intelligence and knowledge because you could have lots of knowledge but if it's taken you 100 years of living to attain that knowledge and mm. that knowledge can be and that is a large amount of knowledge, but someone else can attain it in 10 years, mm. then you're not necessarily intelligent because it's taking you 10 times as long. But then that's like saying every, every, every generation is going to be more confident than the last one because they don't have to spend the time exploring and learning and doing the trial and error. They can just go straight to the solution that the last generation found. Shoot with martial arts, right? Every generation of martial arts improves upon the last one. doesn't mean the last one was more or less intelligent. They should access to to less information. And so it took them longer to discover things, but it doesn't make them dumber or less smart. It just means that they have to spend more time experimenting rather than just going straight to the answer. And I, I think that's that, if you want to call it tell like, you know what I mean? Like that, 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 that's it. There's, they're not more dumb because they came before. They just didn't have access to the same stuff. And I think that's, if you want, I don't think that, that's fair to say that. I think it's fair to say that, that they're not dumb. You know, does that make sense? I don't know. I don't know if that made sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So many people are like, oh, wow, you're so smart. Oh, I don't know how you do that with a computer. I'm like, oh, it's like, it's not. Like, I used to think there was this, like, there's this magical point you get to where it's like, oh, everything makes sense. I'm super smart now. And like, it never comes, bro. And the same with training. I always thought there was this point you get to where it's like, oh, I get MMA and now I'm good at it. And now it's like, it's kind of easy. Like it never, it never comes. The session, the hard sessions now are as hard as the day I fucking first started, bro. They're not easier. I do different things, but like, I'm still as gassed. My brain's still working as hard. Like it never gets easy, man. Like never. Well, you always, but if you're always pushing a hundred percent, then it's always going to feel like you're pushing a hundred percent, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's the same with like intelligence. It's like, it's not, I'm not smart. I'm just spent time reading stuff. And now I can answer questions that you can't. But because I can answer these things, you think I'm smart, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not smart. No one's smart. It doesn't exist on a thing. I, I think that was a good definition that you gave of intelligence, how quickly you can learn something. Mm. But like if I've... 
If you walk into a gym, never done jujitsu before, you're trying to learn an arm bar, how long is that going to take you? Six months, three months, do a competent arm bar? And now let's say you've been doing arm bars from God for three years. And that's the only arm, arm bar you've ever known. But then someone shows you a Troy bar. How long, can you, how long did it take you to pick that up? An hour? Two hours before you can do it? How long before you do it in sparring? A month? Three weeks? You know what I mean? And it's only because you've got that prior experience. So yeah, I'm learning faster now, but it's only because I've practiced arm bars and the mechanics aren't so wildly different that I can't apply what I already know. And so that's why, yeah, okay. But learning makes you faster at learning. So it's not... Yeah, it's, I don't know. I, I don't think, I can't, I don't, I can't call that intelligence. I can't, because it, the only reason you can learn fast is because you've spent time learning. Just people don't spend time learning. And if you want to call that intelligence, like, okay, cool. But it's not like an inherent thing that some people have and some people don't. It's just, you spent time doing it. Now you're good at it. Like, but some people need less time than others. Kids need less time than adults. But even adults, right? Like you take two 23-year-old men mm -hmm. and you start them on jiu-jitsu today. Mm -hmm. Chances are one of them is going to progress faster than the other. Two 23-year-old two men that have the same upbringing? No. Okay, but which I same upbringing. You'd have to control every single variable. No, because they could have different like genetics. The same upbringing? No. You think they progress at the same yeah. rate? What, even if they've got different genetics? Yes. I don't think that's true. Why? Well, well one of them, if, if one of them uh, has genetics which better serves them, so jiu -jitsu. Mm -hmm. Okay, jiu -jitsu is a bad example because there's explosivity. Let's say chess, right? Because that's purely mental. Okay. Yeah, same thing. Same upbringing, you think? Yeah. You don't think some people are more inherently intelligent than others? No. Really? Yeah, 100% no. I think you could take someone from 30,000 BC and put them in a modern school and they'd be fine. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I don't. So, I don't think humans have inherently inherently got more intelligent over the past. Yeah, I think thirty thousand years is fair enough. Mm -hmm. um, we've just, like you said, accumulated more knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I'm brushed up on my anthropology for a while. I'm trying to think thirty thousand years ago. I don't, I'm trying to. Okay, let's think, say two thousand. Let's say. Let's say. Five five thousand years ago, I think the state of human human consciousness was the same as it is today. Okay, pretty much. So, like, same level of inherent intelligence. So, I I, I agree with that. But then, individually, everyone genetically, I, it's in the same way that not everyone's as fast as one another. Just you, you take people, some people genetically mm. faster than you know, you're faster than me. Mm. Like, if both both of us have never trained. In our lives, mm. you put me and you next to I'll one. Probably get the same. Probably about the same, but no. Neither of us have never trained in our lives. We probably get about the same. Like we probably get the same fucking hundred meter time, bro. No, no, I don't believe that. Or, or we've both done the exact same train. We've both done ten practice sessions of sprinting. Mm. You're going to sprint faster than me. What today? Yeah. Like yeah. now. I'm just saying. Yeah, like hypothetically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so it's, it's, that's what I mean. Like, physically, we're not all built equally. Genetically, yeah. some people are stronger than others, faster than others. Yeah. The same is true with intelligence. Yeah. Yeah, I... I you think some people are just I think inherently so. smarter than... Yeah. Nah. You don't think so? No. Nah. Mm, well, I do. Maybe that's true, but it's so minute, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Like, it's it's so... The, the, the gains are so minor that it's irrelevant. Right. I think it's like 99.9999% of it. I think you could t you take someone who is, is the, take the dumbest person you know, take the, the most stupid person you know, yeah, whoever they are, pitch them in your fucking head, the dumbest person you know, okay? Make them a baby, okay? Give them two rich parents that put them into the best private schools in the world and then watch them grow up. They ain't going to be the dumbest person you know. They ain't. No fucking Yeah, I, I agree with no that. I agree way. with that. Like, not by a long shot. Probably look at them and be like, oh, they're so fucking smart. Mm. And it's not. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think there's any debate that nurture outweighs. Oh, I think there is a debate, but I, I, I think nurture outweighs nature for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't say in general, but about this specific thing, yeah. Yeah. 100%. 100%, bro. Oh, I, I, no I definitely way. agree with that. No way. So but I, but I, I still think the nature element is there, still plays part. Maybe what you're interested in. I think temperament determines what you spend your time learning about and what engages you so you can effortlessly pay more attention to one thing than another. I think that plays a big part and that's largely 
uh, genetic or inherited, whatever. But like intelligence, no, no, it's fucking nothing inherent about it. I don't think. And I think a lot of people just spend, you know, they go to school and they spend, they get, they spend a lot of time being told like you're fucking dumb, you're not good at this, you need to do this, why X, Y, Z, and they're being explained in a way that doesn't resonate with them, and so they never improve. And I think that's why people end up being stupid. It's just like they've been taught that they are, so they become it, and. I think that's uh, wrong. I think that's really wrong. I think there's no such thing as a stupid person. I don't think there's any such thing as a smart person. Just someone who's practiced. I think that's that's all it is, practice. I think if you're good at maths, because you practice it. If you're good at jiu-jitsu, it's because you practice it. If you're good at guitar, it's because you practice it. If you're good at music theory, it's because you practice it. It's only practice. There's only practice and improvement. Intelligence doesn't exist. It's not a thing. You're not smart or dumb. You're just un unskilled. And if the if the area of skill is something that's totally cognitive then it's easy to be convinced that you're dumb but you're not robert green yeah you wrote, yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i was gonna ask for your opinion um because i know you've read a lot of his books and uh i listen i didn't actually finish it but i listened to most of the laws of power a mm. few months ago read uh, a fair bit of the art of seduction mm. i've got i basically bought all of his books not yet read them all, but uh, I listened to a couple of podcasts with him on as well recently. I think he's very insightful. The first question I'll ask is, obviously, a lot of what he writes about, I think he maybe even professes this himself, it's a somewhat Machiavellian mm. philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. It's quite dark, and a lot of people look at Robert Greene and think he's a, an evil person. What's mm. your stance on Robert Greene? Because then some people say he's written those books not as a guide as to, he's, he's written those books not to say you should follow what's in these books, but as an expose as to this is what dark human beings will think and act like. So you can then arm yourself against those people. Mm. Well, what's, what's your stance on that? I think he's not written anything that a professional psychologist would disagree with or isn't aware of. And their understanding of everything that he writes is more sophisticated and um, specific. I'm not saying Robert Greene doesn't have that knowledge, but that's not the audience he's going for. The audience is the everyman. So yeah, the so content everyone... he writes has to be more abstract and make more sense. Well, he uses so. history as the, the medium through which he well, he, uses, he uses examples of historical figures and their stories and but that's all it is right when you look at anyone from history it's just if you look at history if you're a student of history all you're doing is either looking at remnants of the past like objects and stories and diaries whatever and making a story up about those things because you can't know for sure um or you're interpret you're listening to someone else's story their interpretation of you know the objects and the things that they found and they weave the narrative around these things that explains why they're there the way they are um, and he uses these historical figures as examples of like, oh yeah, he was a, he was a, a dandy, or he was a fucking siren, whatever, in any of his books. Um, and he does a really good job of, of, of being a, a, a good introduction to these concepts and these things. And he creates nice little categories and groups that you can kind of put people into. And that's a worthwhile thing because you can get so specific where, it only applies to that one person. You can get so abstract where it doesn't apply to anyone anymore. And I think he's in that nice little middle area where it's abstract enough where you can kind of look at any one person and be like, oh yeah, you're kind of a dandy. Oh yeah, you're kind of X, Y, Z from, from laws of human nature. You're kind of like that. You're the jester, whatever, um, in my social dynamic. And there's a pro and con of being made aware of like the things that he writes about, which is largely individual psychology and sociology, right? Like that's his area and he's packaged it in a nice, like bright, right cover. So people walk into it, you know, oh, that's not. And he uses these historical figures and writes about things that are, in, um, and names his books, like the laws of, laws of human nature, laws of power, um, when it's just like psychology light, basically, sociology light, really? Like that's what it is, right? Um, and, the pros and cons of like reading them and being made aware of these things that now that you he, he's brought social dynamics to your attention 
you, you can't un you can't get rid of that. You can't Is that a Pandora's it. box in your mind? Yeah, exactly. Once you see it, you can't like be learning about posture. And once you learn about posture and you start looking at look around, you just notice it. I don't go you don't walk down the street and think, I need to analyze everyone's posture. But when you see someone with shit posture, you go, Ooh, and you would never have pinged that before. And that's the same thing that happens when you start going into like so psychology and sociology is you become aware of social dynamics around you and then your own perception of those social dynamics. And then you start going into philosophy of like, oh, like the anthropological principles and like, is any of this, can, like, is, is any of this legitimate that I'm thinking or is it just my perception, which is made up of like my experiences and then but how do my experiences affect my perception? Because my perception is a result of my experiences and my experience is a result of my perception. It's like a big fucking circle that becomes very confusing you get lost in and that's like the philosophical rabbit hole you go to the valley of despair you don't know anything but that's one extreme and then the other extreme is being totally ignorant of everything right so then you have to be like but even and then you come back to like everyday life <laughs> right um but when you become aware of like these social dynamics and and how you interact with people and the techniques that he can techniques that he outlines in his books you then have to make a conscious decision whether you acknowledge and how you act on it. And then that makes interaction more stressful because these things that were inherent and underlying before that maybe you did or didn't do reflexively, um, they're not reflexive anymore. They're conscious. And now that that's a, an awkward place to be in when you're like 24, 25, 30, 40, your whole life, you've been like, Oh my God, I've been, I've been doing this thing. I didn't even know about Does that make me a bad person? You know, it's a weird uh, pros and like it's it's hard, man. But then it can also make you a better person because, man, I had this really toxic cycle that I was unaware of. But now I've looked into it's like this nice introduction that Robert Greene has handed me with his eye catching title has made me look more deeply into the dark triad or whatever that I didn't know I was a part of. Now I can improve my behavior and improve the life, my life, my relationships with other people. So it's um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard, man. Like knowledge is painful. Like, learning things hurts. Going to the gym hurts. Same, same, right? Exercise, it sucks. It's hard, but you become strong from it. L learning things, knowledge, like collect accruing it is difficult. It's stressful. It's, it's hard to sit and concentrate. And like a lot of times I can understand people's reluctance to sit there and struggle with like a hard philosophical book or a difficult mathematical problem because it causes anxiety. Like knowing you're going into a hard workout cause your anxiety knowing to sit down I'm, my brain is going to struggle to get to the solution of this problem and it's going to affect me for the rest of the day is a stressful thing to sit with but um i think you have to do it because otherwise you get what we have today and it's just run by fucking assholes who can steal your attention and convince you that same day delivery is worth enslaving like ten thousand people in a fucking shit warehouse when no one wants to do that you know so yeah read the books analyze yourself become better but it hurts Chris Williamson says that reading's like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen by accident. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really true. Well, it does not... happen by accident though, all the fucking time. Do you think well yeah. well people don't consistently go into the go to the gym without looking at like their schedule where it's in their mind or written down for the week and going, mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna go to the gym then, then and then. Mm -hmm. You don't just kind of meander about through life and yeah. find yourself in the gym. No, but you, you can you find know, yourself exercising. I guess, yeah. No, okay, yeah. like not the gym. Like, yeah, okay, going to the gym and sitting down in a nice candlelit room with a pipe reading a book, you can equate those two things. But if you want to equate exercise with that, is inaccurate. So exercise and reading, like you can do those two things without realizing you're doing them. How many times did that happen? I'll read someone's Instagram bio. I bought okay. some Ikea. Uh, yes. I bought some Ikea furniture. I need to go to the manual. Like you're reading. You're ingesting information. You just know you are. Same thing when you're scrolling bullshit. You're ingesting information. That's shaping your worldview. You're just not aware of it. It's not deliberate. Like, just like gardening isn't deliberate exercise, but it's still taxing. Moving house isn't deliberate exercise, but it's still taxing. Okay. So, so if you want to do something deliberate, if you want to go to the gym and have a deliberate structured session with intent, that's not going to happen by accident. Mm -hmm. If you want to read to um, gain and assimilate information with a certain intent, that's not going to happen by accident. Mm, that is that, yeah. But, but then the way that life structures you're not accidentally going to fall into exercising most likely today because our lives are so sedentary, mm -hmm. but you will fall into reading uh -huh. accidentally a lot more yeah. because you got to read the Twitter feed. You yeah. got to read 
there's still words on Instagram, obviously, yeah, obviously posts. it's a lot more visual based. Yeah, but still, how many, videos. how many times do you go straight to the comments when you're watching reels? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even the caption, obviously, yeah. moving captions, yeah. that's why they're so effective because people still want to read, even when they're hearing, and even when they're listening. Mm -hmm. But uh, circling back to Robert Greene, do you think that people should follow the laws of power? Do you think people should, you know, should people follow the laws of power when looking at their career? Should people follow the strategies of seduction when they're looking at dating and relationships? Or do you think they're a code of caution? Mm. Or do you think it's a bit of both? I don't think anyone should follow anything, like, um, religiously. Uh, I think if you're interested in, like, the title and the blurb, and that encourages you to read the book, um, thinking about the times in your life where what you're reading is accurate and the times in your life where what you're reading is inaccurate is the best way to go about ingesting this kind of content or any content really. Um, and I would say whether or not it's a word of caution depends on like your interpretation of it. I don't like reading laws of power is going to give you some superpower where now I can just manipulate everyone around me and get everything I want. It's just going to make you aware of certain social dynamics and patterns that happen that were always happening. And now you're just aware of them and maybe you can navigate it a bit differently. Like your choice of partner, your choice of boss, how you deal with conflicts um, might make you worse at those things. It might make you better at those things. Like you don't know, you don't know. So it's just like, kind of comes back to temperament, I guess, whether how interested in social, um, like developing a social understanding of social knowledge you are versus how interested in developing mechanical or electrical knowledge you are, right? Or martial arts knowledge, like what you read is determined by what you're interested in. Like if you're gonna sit down and deliberately ingest a book, you can't read every book ever. So you have to pick, right? And what do you pick based on what you like? Well, how do you find what you like? Well, that's just, temperament and upbringing so um yeah don't don't read any don't read anything nothing nothing should be read in no person no one thing no idea should be taken like this is gospel and i'm gonna live my life based on these principles like no fucking way bro like read them this is one person's th what you're reading is your perspective on someone else's summary of their experience in life like don't lose track of that that's what you're reading, okay? And that's all you'll ever be reading. It won't ever be truth. It won't ever be fucking give you all the answers you want. It's not out there. It doesn't exist. Like just other people's stories and your interpretation of their stories. And their stories is their interpretation of other people's stories and their interpretation of things that happen around them. You know? You watch a car crash and three people could write a story about said car crash and it'd be three wildly different fucking accounts. And that's true for everything. So take it all with a not a grain of salt, but see it for what it is. See it for what it is, and not what you want it to be. You know, it's no secret fucking source, no superpower, no, no no truth, no answers. It's not out there. Maybe maybe with math, maybe, but even then, probably not. So you, is that fair? Is, does that make you, sense? Yeah, no, it absolutely makes sense. What I'm going to ask is like such a cringy philosophical question. Like ob objective truth. Do you think yeah. like there is like a truth? Because then obviously the um, other side of the fence to that is, oh no, it's all your truth versus you know your truth. And um, you know, you say that some people go, oh, there's no such thing as your truth. There is just the truth. Is there such thing as the truth? This is just very, very classical philosophy now. Are there objective truths? Because like you said, maths, surely that's like, you know, one plus one equals two, right? And I say right hesitantly because I'm waiting for you to like drop some <laughs> bomb on me where one plus one doesn't always equal two. Uh, what, um, I think if you look at what maths is to me, like pure math, is the study of um, relationships between symbols. And that's why algebra is so powerful because now it doesn't matter what the symbol is, right? Like when you're counting, you only have 10 symbols to work with. Now with algebra, you have essentially an infinite number of symbols because you can write whatever you want. And the relationships between those things remain true, right? Like 2x, like 2x equals whatever. Like it doesn't matter what you put in for x. It's always going to be, that's the point, right? Like even just x, like you can just make x equal whatever. And so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So it's not really about the thing. 
not about the thing, it's about the relationship the thing has with the things around it. And that, there's a truth to that because everything's relative. And I believe that. Um, I, really th I really think everything's relative, but then there's a way you can analyze these relativistic like objects in space in a way that highlights the relationships between them objectively. Um, but even then, your, your, your objectivity is based on, ah, oh, but then no. Yeah, I'll stick with that. I'll stick with that for now. Probably change that in a year, but I'll stick with that for now. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think our objective enough for us. I think that's an important point as well, right? Like it, objectivity or even subjectivity. Ob like what most people consider objective is subjective within but within a, a set of parameters right like go outside and say it's sunny well yeah it is but that's only because anyone who would go outside and not see it sunny, sunny is dead because they would have died right like if it's pissing it down it's like minus four and they went outside and perceived it as pleasant they would sit out and die and that's why those people don't exist right like not, they've been naturally selected away and so now anyone who goes outside and, and sees it as sunny is like what's left and so we, can, uh, we objectively, okay, we objectively yeah. say, oh, yeah, it's sunny. Anyone who disagrees is a fucking idiot. That's only because anyone who would have disagreed is now not with us anymore because they wouldn't have survived, right? And so even then, like, our objectivity is, lot, is, is, is subjective, but it's just within a, a set of parameters that not enough people disagree with for us to argue. And I think that's pretty true. Um, when you talk about the world, you know, who you're voting for, no, oh, they're stupid, like, whatever, you know? Objectivity, like, does objectivity exist? Does objectivity exist? I'm going to say only to the observer. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. Yeah. Give me a sec to think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to go away and digest. That. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's what I'm going to say. It's fairly cryptic, but I don't think I can. Yeah, it, who's, the, who's the counterpart to the observer? Um, what's being observed? Yeah, I was going to say some digesting. Because mm. in this scenario, you're what's being observed. This coffee cup what's being observed. That camera on the TV is what's being observed. The camera over there is what's being observed. But from your perspective, I'm being observed. But it's only objective to you or me, not to both of us, hmm. I think. Yeah, talking about intelligence, there's definitely variations of genetic intelligence. I don't think so. Well, that's just down to the the maths that you've studied or, or the study that you've done. Just like it's not down to it. It's down. It's like because like levels of consciousness, right? How do people achieve higher levels of consciousness than other people? Mm, psychedelics, meditation, and philosophy, and they just practice those things. And they've been exposed to those things. And people who don't have those, that high level of consciousness haven't practiced those things and haven't been exposed to those things. No one is unable to do that. Hmm. I wrote down a couple of the laws of power, laws of power that I like. I want to get your thoughts on them. Mm. Do not build fortresses to protect yourself. Mm. Isolation is dangerous. Mm. I wouldn't, it wouldn't be a fortress then if you're on your own, would it? It'd be like a burrow, or like some sticks in the ground. <laughs> one one point, person man. is incapable of building a fortress. That's also a good point. So I don't think that's, you can, that's accurate. Because by definition of fortress, like it's too big to be like built by a person. So if you have one, it's because there's a group of you. And then that maybe that too is dangerous. But then also, if you let everyone through the doors, then the Mongols are gonna come steal your women and kill your kids. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it, it just really rang true to me because my natural instincts are: I want to control my environment. I want, you know, a bit of a control freak. I want 
this to be like this, this mm. to be like this. And like my ideal is I'm going to build this empire. It's going to be exactly how I want. I'm going to have in it the people that I want. And then it's shielded from the rest of society. Mm. We talked about, you know, society and I was in a bit of an ugly state at the moment. I want to be in this... I did a word of the day a few weeks ago, which described this perfectly. Oh, I forgot no. it. Basically shielded, you know what I mean? Shielded yeah. from the, the dangers and the mm. harms of society. You know, a, a safe haven. But you, you build a fortress like that, you're then isolated from the rest of humanity. Mm. And you don't have room for community. And you take all, you know, you control your environment completely. You can't even do that. But say that you, you did achieve that ideal. You've taken away the serendipity of life. You know, you've, you've taken away the so many opportunities for new experiences to meet new people. So that really rang true to me. You've got this idea in your mind that you want to control your environment, build this empire, build this fortress, and have these controls over what's in it and who's in it. Mm, maybe not the best idea. Yeah. Probably not. I don't know. I don't know. Pros and cons, bro. Choose your suffering. Doesn't matter. <laughs> it's gonna suck either way. <laughs> you build a fortress, sick. Still sucks. You go out there and you're naked in the woods, sick. Still sucks. You're a fucking productive member of society and everyone gets on together, sick. Probably still gonna suck, right? <laughs> You know, there's pro or, or, if or, or if you're or positive, build a, build it's still going to be great. Yeah, build a fortress. It's exactly. Great. Naked in the woods. It's Exa great. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you know, balancing, balancing yeah. it out. <laughs> uh, the other one, I think everyone can agree with: win through actions, never through argument. Yeah. 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 I, th I think that just goes. That's the proof in the pudding when you. Analyzing a text like Robert Greene's work, it's not black and white. It's not oh, this is an expose on what you shouldn't follow. This, you know, is a code on what you should. Because that, like, who can't get behind that? You're telling me that's some Machiavellian principle that mm. people should steer clear of. Mm. <laughs> no, that that's universal. Is there ever a, a, an instance, a circumstance where you should look to? Win through argument rather than actions. On an individual level, I suppose if someone says to you, Oh, cats can fall from the top of the Empire State Building and survive. Maybe you should like show them some CVAT equations or whatever physics principles going to prove well, you them wrong rather than prove them right, and you could just do it anyway. Well, that's what I'm saying. Maybe in that circumstance, you should not throw the cat off the Empire State Building. But to they'll show never. Them. You'll not change their minds. You won't change their minds because any, 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 anyone who would uh, uh, appreciate CVAT equations already has the prerequisite knowledge, and they would appreciate it. But okay. if you're having an argument about this. <laughs> It's because they don't, you know, subscribe to the prerequisite axioms and understanding that is required to appreciate super equations. So arguing with, like you'd have, I guess then it would be an argument through it. It wouldn't be an argument. It would be an education. And then that dynamic isn't one of equals then, right? It's one of student and teacher. And so if you're of an equal keel, you probably aren't going to get anywhere. And so the only way to prove one of you right or wrong is to take it to the nth degree. And maybe that's what's happening, right? Like if you strip it all back, maybe that's, Tesla and Apple and Google, maybe that's the, that's what's happening. My philosophy is better than your philosophy. No, it's not. And they're just having these arguments and closed door meetings and they've just built these massive fucking empires around that. This is one fit, like, I think the fucking, I think Khabib's a better champion than John Jones and now there's just a fucking, <laughs> a technocratic war. <laughs> you know, I don't know. But, um, um, on an individual level, I pro probably, probably not, probably not. Because there's degrees of arguments, right? You can have a disagreement that's amicable and you're both trying to come to the, like, a, but you're both trying to see where the other person's coming from. There's a difference between making an argument and having an argument. I suppose, yeah. 
and like an argument can be expressed with actions as well you know like i could do this and you could be like oh i don't like that there so you move it back and then i'll go i don't like that so i move it back like we're arguing but we're not like but it's through actions so then that falls apart pretty quick too so i don't know Depends like how deep you want to look into it. Because eventually everything falls apart, right? Any philosophical, any statement, like doesn't is it true for everything? Even that one, ironically. <laughs> 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 you know? So <laughs> I don't know. Right? I don't know. On an individual because then it's like, oh, I want to have kids and my missus doesn't. So I'm gonna poke holes in my condoms and then like I've gone through action. But like you're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the example I was looking for. But you're a cunt. <laughs> or vice versa. Oh, I'm gonna stop taking my birth control. <laughs> oh, I'm pregnant. You win. I, I win. You lose. Like yeah, I won. But like <laughs> you didn't, bro. <laughs> Depends on your definition of winning. Yeah. You know? So Depends on your moral code. So uh, it depends what the what the conflict's about. If, if you're going to say you can't do something, then I'll prove it through action rather than arguing with you. You can't run up Snowden. Yeah, I can. No, you can't. Yeah, I can. And then none of us run up Snowden. That's just a waste of time. You can't run up Snowden. Oh, hey, bro, I'm at the top of Snowden. Here's a photo. You've won there. So I think that's really the only time that that applies. Like, absolutely. The rest of it's like, no, communication is important. Language is great. I wish you use it. Use it well, though. You know, a lot of people can't talk. It's upsetting frustrates me i'm very particular with my language mate right like, but that's not what you said but you know what i meant no i didn't i pay attention to the words you're using man you've got to be accurate i'm fucking particular <laughs> i said to you it was uh, it was about this time last year a bit over a year ago mm. um we were doing something unrelated i think and uh, i was just pondering out loud and i said oh i haven't written any poetry for a while i should mm. write some poetry and you just said to me, poetry's for sad boys. Poetry's for sad boys, bro. Yeah. That's okay. You can be a sad boy. Yeah, yeah. Be a sad but boy. happy people write songs. Sad yeah. people write poetry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah 100%. I'll die, on that. I'll die on that hill, bro. I'll die on that hill. Yeah. But what, what, what do you think that is? Because I, 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 I do think there's truth in that. Mm. Yeah. Go, go into that a bit. I don't know, man. Like, think of this. I think the saddest song that I, I can name is Hurt by Johnny Cash. Like, that's the saddest song that I could possibly I'll have to name. Listen to it. And there are some poems that are supposed to be happy that are still sadder than that song. So I just think, <laughs> 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 you know, poetry is just for sad boys, bro. It's for sad people. It's Jen. Happy people write songs. I, I think, from my own personal experience, pain produces the best poetry. Mm, okay. Yeah. There was that poet who was terrible and then went to World War II and then came back great. I don't know who it is. <laughs> I remember that story in school and I was like, mm, something to that. <laughs> you took notes of that. Yeah, I was that's, like, mm. that's where that came from. Eleven year old Pez was like, mm, <laughs> <laughs> I'll need this one day. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't I, know why. I, I I do think I think there is some truth in that. Because you can't dance to poetry, right? Well, he could, but it wouldn't. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. Go to a, go to a fucking live spoken poetry event, mate. Start dancing to see the looks you get. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. the looks I get if I dance to songs. So. No, well, <laughs> let's say you're a good dancer, and then but like you, you can slow dance to sad songs. Like yeah. some, I'm sure people have beautiful memories of listening to a really sad song and holding someone they love, and listing left and right and that's a dance and you can't do that to poetry mm. no i don't know it's more vulnerable no. isn't it i suppose interesting there's no love in the club and i don't have a nice enough watch <laughs> <laughs> who came up with that bro oh, gee <laughs> do you remember saying that yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, better wear a Rolex if you go clubbing, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about that. And I suppose what I'm kind of indirectly asking through that is like dating in this world we find ourselves in society. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want to be more specific? Well, what do you see when you look at the state of dating relationships 
in this society, in this modern world. Mm. I, don't, I don't want to start slapping the label crisis onto everything that we talk about. <laughs> it's but, a dating crisis. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I saw lots of statistics recently. Mm. The amount of people that aren't in um, relationships in their 20s, yeah. um, that aren't even sexually active in their 20s, it's just plummeted mm. yeah. off a cliff from like 20, 25 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, people are a lot more lonely. People are struggling to find people that they want to marry. I mean, uh, I think it's given that divorce rates have been on the incline for some time now. Yeah. Obviously, that goes along with the degradation of the family unit. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think it's harder to find love today than it was 50, 100 years ago? Or do you think it's the way societies move, people uh, are willing to let go of relationships that don't serve them? Um much more than they, they used to be. Yeah. Mm, I think there are like, there's a, a pretty big economy around people keeping people single. Um, you look at like Bumble, Hinge, Tinder, whatever, their money is made by people who are single. So they have a an incentive to keep people single, you know. Um, I think having the time to date is diminishing it, diminishing uh having the finances to date because it's an expensive endeavor is diminishing so just people's ability to meet someone is um harder than ever unless it's online I and mean, they have an incentive to keep people single mm, they're in charge of that there's an algorithm to that right oh of course man. of course a powerful one it's had a lot of money spent on it you know, and a lot of compute, a lot of compute. They spend a lot of money, man. Like, oh, I wish I had those GPUs. Oh my God. And, <laughs> what, what's the GPU? Uh, graphics processing unit. So they're really good at parallel uh, processing. Where you can, if you look at like machine learning algorithms, there's a lot of lin- lot, a lot of linear algebra, a lot of tensor multiplication, a lot of matrix multiplication. You can do these things in parallel uh, with a GPU, like because they have like have many cores like oh that. so like they're making visual comparisons between not necessarily but the the the, the really cool thing about like uh, graphics processing and kind of machine learning is the math behind it the linear algebra is uh really similar and so graphics processing units are really really good for the same like graphic graphics programming and machine learning algorithm machine learning neural network development they share a lot of similarities when it comes to the math behind them and so you can run uh, these, you know, hundreds of thousands of matrix multiplications for graphics processing, and you can run these hundreds of thousands of uh, matrix multiplications in parallel for neural networks. So they use GPUs for those. And they've developed TPUs, tensor processing units, which are slightly different and more optimized for neural networks. But I've not really looked into that too much. What was the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that, that came from dating apps. The question was uh, about dating, yeah. dating in society. Yeah, so I think it's hard. And, and like, love. I suppose, uh, I suppose like what that quote alludes to as well is it's not just about dating, it's about love. How do you find love without, like... Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's like something, love is something you build together. Mm. So not but, but like dating could be thriving in society and love could be absolutely in the gutter. Well, dating is thriving in society. You know, just not for everyone. For, mm. Like the pretty people, the people who can like open up their phone and like get a shitload of attention because they're paying or like there's a picture of their next Porsche or whatever. Like those people are doing really fucking well. But then the people who aren't those people are doing really, really fucking badly. <laughs> so um, it's just, uh, yeah, the opportunities to date uh, have diminished. Uh, monogamy isn't like, you know, enforced anymore. No one, you, you, you could be a, a woman and have multiple partners and no one bats an eyelid. You could be a man with multiple partners and no one bats an eyelid. Whereas before that would have been, oh my fucking God, you've been annexed from this community. I'm so ashamed of you. And that's not the, that's not the case. So then that social pressure is disintegrated. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, I was going to say something cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just think it's, um, yeah, it's fucked. <laughs> I think it's fucked, mate. I, I definitely think it's a good thing, or there's a lot of pros to us being 
freed from the structure of you're going to get married to somebody at 18, 20 years old, build a family with them, that's it. You know, you're not really going to you know, explore any other opportunities. I'm not talking about cheating on your wife, but you know, you know what I mean? Like now, like if two people aren't happy with one another, it's perfectly socially acceptable for them to get a divorce. Which is good, mm-hmm. I think. So there's obviously pros with us being relinquished from that uh, structure, but then without any kind of structure, we've ended up in a in a mm-hmm. wild west. And you have access to more people than any one person would have access to in history. Yeah, yeah. Before it was yeah, who you the, grew up the, next the, to, the who ten your girls are. that were you know near enough your age in your village, and now it's the ten thousand people. And you would have known their parents and their brothers and their sister and their friends, and you would have like there would have been. You know what I mean? Some to to break up would have caused the people you know, the people you're close to, pain, not just the person you're breaking up with, and that's disintegrated. Like you, you, you can be a good-looking person and get more attention on Instagram than fucking Alexander the Great could have gotten in his lifetime, and we are equipped to, to deal with that. No, <laughs> no. Oh well, you you insulted my. You didn't give me the right compliment. I'll just go find someone who can. Oh, you didn't give me the right compliment. I'll Mm. Like that's the reality of it, mate. I feel like uh, most <laughs> most most things go back to Dubar's number or whatever it is. Dubar's number? Yeah, 150 people is the oh, okay, the yeah. maximum number or the ideal number of um, cohabitating people, yeah, humans yeah. that you can build relationships with yeah. and work with effectively. Yeah, like you can just see 150 women now on you know, even on dating on Instagram any anything. Mm than you used to be able to in your little village, in your yeah. little environment. Yeah. You can interact with way more than you can send 150 DMs. Yeah, man, I think hard, Instagram man. actually caps your DMs at 100 a day. Really? I think I heard, yeah. Oh, amazing. Thank, thank yeah. God. So you can't actually do that, but, <laughs> or maybe you can. <laughs> it's like, where, where's the time, man? Like, okay, you got to work nine to five, and you got to go to the gym, and you got to do all your shopping, and you got to keep your house clean. you got to drive to and from everywhere because you can't just walk and everything's miles apart. Uh, and then you have to find time to spend time with your friends and then you want to study and learn and read and then you want to date like how 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 you how like uh, you can't <laughs> unless you date someone in the workplace that's a dangerous game careful there unless you date someone like, you know what i mean like how <laughs> where when <laughs> and then you go on holiday it's probably it it's probably it's probably probably where you, you meet people it's on holiday when you can oh no responsibilities make sure i've got time to invest into another human oh this is this is novel you know, that doesn't happen. Where, where, you can't. That's where love comes from, bro. You know? Fucking spending time with someone, talking about things that fucking matter to you both, and learning about them. Like, that's that's where love emerges from. Like, you can't just, just fucking swipe right. Oh, yeah, my love of my life. Like, no, mate. Even then, it's like, it's like there's a bar, man. It's like, if you meet someone on Tinder or Hinge, it's like, Versus meeting someone naturally, organically at the top of Snowden, you're a hundred percent immediately more invested in that second scenario than the first one. Like just inherently, straight away. Because you've had to put so much more, so much more effort it's into organic it. Organic right? and the fucking storytelling. Your grandkids is great, and like, I don't know, man. It's like, oh, the chances of this happening are next to none. The chances of this happening are fucking literally ninety percent if you're paying. So, <laughs> so it's just like. <laughs> I don't know, man. We've just, we've just, as a as a culture, as a community, as a society, don't don't value human connection. And obviously, when you don't value human connection, like romantic relationships are going to die, and commitments and marriages are going to crumble. The nuclear family is going to shit itself. You know, it is, it is. Um, and then, yeah, that comes down to like what we collectively do as individuals. So make yourself better, whatever. Yeah, well, I think like evil's born from weakness and ignorance. I think I think if you can do your best to make yourself strong, which is doable, and you make yourself, you make every effort to not be ignorant, and that's not just ignorant of like mass and literature, but ignorant of the people around, like not ignorant of the people around you and their desires and their and yourself. Most importantly, yeah. you know, yeah. Then because when you close your eyes at night, you got no one next to you. Like there's only you, bro. It's only you. You gotta be able to live with that. No one can jump in your head and live life with you. Like you're alone in that sense. No one will ever, ever, ever share this experience you you have right now. And so you have to make sure that like 
with yourself, there's, there's, a, there's some understanding, there's some peace and some patience. Because fuck, bro, it's not easy for a bad motherfucking ride, bro. This shit sucks. <laughs> Don't make it worse. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I love, love, um, I think love died when God died, you know? When what died? God. Mm. Yeah, Nietzsche, God is dead. I think that was, uh, that was the beginning and the end. Yeah, I mean, it's an underlying theme of this podcast. Modern living continues to be a could be mint, morass could to be navigate. Mint. Could be mint. I went to yeah, a museum. I, mean, I went to a museum, bro. And you just look around like, like, how is this better? How is this better? I can't make, no one can make anything from scratch. Like, think about it. People be like, oh, I made this. I made a website from scratch. I mean, more fucking did it, bro. You didn't go to the beach. You didn't go to the beach and purify the sand into silicon and then dope it with boron and make a fucking transistor and then build a CPU with those transistors, bro. You didn't do that. You didn't make it from scratch, man. No fucking way. You want to make anything from scratch. People didn't make a fucking car from scratch. People can't fucking make a tool from scratch. You can't do anything from scratch, bro. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe farmers can say, I made bread from scratch because they planted the seeds and ground the wheat. And then like a very specific subset of like really niche farmers that like making bread and growing wheat, they can say they built something from scratch. But then the tools they used to farm that much in that amount of time couldn't make that from scratch. Can't make anything. Can't make anything. And like we, we could though, you know what I mean? That could be like that could be a thing. You'd be like four years old and be like, oh, me and my dad made a computer from fucking scratch, mate, because that's like our jam. You know, or we made a car from scratch, bro. Like that'd be cool. But we can't can't make anything, and this is supposed to be better. You know what I mean? Fucking no, it's not. It's not. It isn't. Shut the fuck up. It's not. Don't care. I'm not interested. It's not. This is shit. This is shit. This is shit. A majority of people, bro, have jobs they fucking hate, managed by people they don't fucking like to build things. No one gives a fuck about, bro. And we're like, this is good. Mm, yeah, this is sweet. I'm happy with this. No, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> this shit sucks, man. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw a fucking shield. I saw a shield, right, made out of a crocodile's hide. And I was like, that's the most badass thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, I would rather be doing that than working in an Amazon warehouse, right? I would rather be building something from hand for my family that live in, like, some fucking shack that we built together from, from scratch than, like, oh, yeah, sick. We've got a new Apple Pro. <laughs> now I can track my sleep better. Sick. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Nah. Not interested, mate. That's what everyone wants. That's the like the modern fantasy, mate. Is I want to go escape to the mountains. Every man has had this fucking fantasy. I want to go and escape to the mountains. I want to grow some fucking some vegetables. My peng misses. She can look after the kids and grow the veg, and I'm gonna fucking hunt elk or have a little fucking deer paddy with a house that we built ourselves, and we don't have to deal with any of this fucking shit anymore. And that's just like so common across fucking everyone. And we just oh, keep... no, I talk about that no end. Everyone, mate, and we just <laughs> trudge along, just making cunts money, mate. And we fucking we're miserable, we're miserable, but we keep doing it because, like, what's the alternative? Your family die. That's the crux of it, mate. <laughs> They've won, bro. <laughs> Catch twenty two. Keep going. Shit sucks. Stop. Society grinds to a halt. Everything collapses. That shit sucks, and probably my kids will die. So I'll just keep doing my thing. All right, fair one. Fair one. How can I be mad at that? But also stop watching Jake Paul. You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday evening, um, me and Pear, my brother, yeah. went for a, a walk um, up this hill, about a 20-minute drive from where we live. And usually there's no one up there. Mm. Really nice evening. Weather was like it is today. And we walk up the hill thinking it's going to be nice and quiet. And there was about 50 people at the top of the hill. <laughs> like, not a group of 50 people, 50 like individual, like group, little groups of people uh, playing music, not too loud, sitting, having a picnic. And I was astonished. Yeah. These people had decided that instead of opting to go down to their local pub, yeah. they'd come out into the countryside, yeah. walked up this hill yeah. to basically enjoy the weather and watch the sunset. That was cool. Yeah. And that gave me a lot of hope. Oh, that's I, I, I think <laughs> it's not, you know, it's not broke. Nothing's broken that we can't fix. And there's a lot that needs fixing, but I remain to be. Unfortunately, the camera died and we lost the end of this podcast. I did only have one question left to ask Perry, which was the classic final question on the podcast here at Being Human, which is 
what is success? What is the meaning of life? Are they the same thing? Are they different? Uh, Perry <laughs> gave a great answer to this, and it's such a shame that we lost the end of this podcast because Perry finished on a real positive and optimistic note, saying that really, despite everything he's said, you know, um, all, all the negatives about society, about the state of the UK, he believes humans are good people. By and large, humans are good moral people. And he used a, a funny metaphor uh, about driving. And if humans weren't good at the core, we would just be driving around, running people over whenever we felt like it. Um, yeah, he finished on a real positive and optimistic note. He said, by and large, people are good. And we just need to tap into that. We need to get rid of the interference, the disturbance in our lives that leads us to not do good, that has led us into this, you know, not so great way of living. If we're able to remove the barriers, so to speak, then life is great, people are great, and we can have great lives together in this world, on this planet. So uh, yeah, a real positive, optimistic note. Shame you couldn't hear it from the horse's mouth, from him himself, but uh, that was the gist of it. Thank you for watching as always and see you next week.